We will return to your scheduled programming shortly, or we are currently experiencing technical difficulty. Good evening, everybody. This is Michael J. Crawford, the anti trucker have my bottle of Romulan Ale vintage uh, three days ago. And we're going to be drinking from my ceremonial CBS Sucks cup because, well, CBS sucks. And I hope that you are all having a wonderful, wonderful weekend so far. Thomas throws a buck 99 in the chat, says, to remember, Klingons have two wieners. Thank you, Thomas. You know, and that's one thing I got to say, we all owe a great gratitude, a great debt of gratitude to Alex Kurtzman and all the rest of the wonderful people behind Star Trek Discovery so that we all can celebrate and know the fact that Klingons indeed have two wieners. Because what could possibly be more important than that? I now pronounce you man and turd. You may now kiss. Joshua, what are you doing? <laughs> nothing, nothing. I'm definitely not making you kiss law. I repeat, I am not making you kiss law. I'm definitely not. <laughs> I love that one. And Nerdrotic is in the house. For those of you that don't know, Nerdrotic has a fairly sizable channel here. He is a absolute expert on comic books. If you if you care about and, and in fact, uh Nerdronic uh uh Nerdrotic, I apologize. Uh, has recently announced that he's going to be uh, opening up his own comic book shop in, uh, I believe, the San Francisco Bay Area, which is very exciting, except for the fact that you're in the wrong state. You should be in Tennessee. But uh, I, I, and we talked about, uh, well, just really briefly, is that we got to get together sometime and, and have a stream together. And, and I'll tell you, Nerdrotic, uh, and, and you tell me if this would be fun. I'd love to, we could come on your channel or on mine and talk about the impact of comic books and comic book films and why Marvel's doing it right and DC's doing it wrong. And, and from a couple of nerds that like comic books. Uh, I think that could be an interesting discussion. Um, Josh says, wait, there's still the art of writing? Here I thought it was all copy and paste. Now, well, no, that's why I'm saying whatever happened to the art of writing. And, I mean, if we look at film, if we look at television, heck, if we look at comic books, and if we look at almost every type of media out there, writing sucks these days. And I, it's just, I don't, I don't know. It just seems like it's gone. And, and I don't know what, if anything, can bring it back. Uh, and, and part of it, at least in the, the world of film, I get it. Because when it comes to tentpole films, what we, you know, action films, science fiction, that kind of stuff, the problem we run into is the fact that visual effects have gotten so bad or so bad, so awesome, I should say, is that you can literally create, with, you have, if you have a couple hundred million dollar budget, you can create any imagery imaginable. And so writing becomes secondary to the spectacle. But that's, that's what's wrong, is that we, uh, you know, we, in, in the, in the, from the dawn of film up until about 15, 20 years ago, Writers had to work within the constraint of what we can visually show you. And you had to build up characters and you had to write interesting dialogue. You couldn't just depend on it looking so cool that it'll keep people enthralled. I think the movie that genuinely changed all that, while it's a good movie, was Jurassic Park. Because with Jurassic Park, it wasn't a bad movie, but what was the one thing everybody walked away from? It wasn't how cool the characters were, the story, or any of that. It was, holy crap, they made dinosaurs look real. And that movie became a huge mega hit just because they made dinosaurs look real. And so that's, uh, you know, unfortunately, it's, it's just gone. 
Uh, Nexus says the art of writing died in 2006. Why specifically 2006 Nexus? I'm curious about that. I'm sure there's some reference there that I'm just not catching. Uh, and Mr. Miles says, what happened to writers? Marvel found all the good ones. So if you mean Marvel Studios, I would tend to agree with you, not Marvel Comics. And Nerdrotic agrees about the 2006 thing, so I want to know what's the reference to 2006. Misanthro Pony is in the house, my favorite brony on the web. How you doing, my friend? Um, the Doctor Who thing you're printing looks pretty good. Yeah, I've uh, since learning a lot more about the settings and everything on 3D printing, I, I can tell with every print I attempt, and even the ones that I've scrapped, I've improved every single time around, and this Dalek is actually starting to look pretty good. I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing how it looks coming off of the uh, printer. Hopefully, uh, right around the time this show ends. Uh, speaking of which, I actually wanted to show this to you guys and kind of get your opinion. Now, I'm going to print a different version of this tonight uh, if the Dalek comes off the printer before I go to bed. And here we go, a plaque for the USS Anti-Tracker. Now, unfortunately, this line of text got a little... Uh, it's a little shallow. It needs to be deeper engraved into it. But I really like the overall look. Um... So, curious to see what you guys think. Uh, I will be, uh, since I'm hanging out with uh, Reality Strikes tomorrow night, I'm going to show this to him in person and see what he thinks. Um, speaking of good writing, have you not played Knights of the Old Republic, have you? I played it a long, long time ago, but not anytime recently. Uh, in the world of action movies, good writing does not exist anymore, but there are fantastic writers in other genres. There are decent writers out there, Xavier, but I would dare say that writing has gone downhill across the board. Uh, I don't think that the, the writing we're getting today, even in drama and high-concept sci-fi, while some of it is really good, it's, it's not what it was. Um, so... I kind of think that Jurassic Park is heavily overrated for that. I, you know, here's the thing. I really enjoyed Jurassic Park. Um, but actually, my favorite thing about Jurassic Park was uh, Jeff Goldblum, not the dinosaurs. And, uh, yeah. anti Trucker Waste X-Men movie by Fox. Oh, man. Sci-fi. 20th century. And, and, and since Nerdronic is in the house... Uh, and he is a true expert on comics, not me. I mean, I, I have about 5,000 comic books. This dude has run a comic book shop and is about to open another one. So uh, I absolutely would, uh, would uh, yield to his authority on the subject of comic books. So let me ask you this, Nerdrotic. Give me in, in your, your, your little quick blurb as a post on the comments, if you're still here, your opinion of the X-Men films. And I'll wait until you respond, and then I will tell you mine. Um, so, say, folks, just want to let you know that I wrapped up an important live stream on my own channel. It's for raising awareness for a friend who needs help getting out of an abusive home. If you can, take the time to share or donate to GoFundMe. Believe me, it's legit. Now, Miss Anthro, normally I don't like people spamming on my channel, but it sounds like you're legit with that, so I would... Uh, I'll tell you what, if you, I, I don't know if you're on Discord, but if you are, send the link for that to Captain George, and then he can put it in there. Um, and said, um, one of the many names that I cannot pronounce is in the house, says, good evening, my good sir. <laughs> Ariska, Arisaka. <laughs> and Mary is here. Mary, I hope, I know you have ups and downs. I hope today was a good day for you. Uh, let us know how you're feeling today. Um, Jurassic Park was my favorite movie until Return of the King. I like Jurassic Park a lot. Um, I wouldn't call it my favorite movie, but uh, I definitely liked it a lot. Um, well, I'll be making videos in situations soon, so I'll be able to show people go fund me then on ways to access it. That's why. Um, and so, and yeah, if you, Miss Anthro, you, uh, if you look in the in the description below, the link to my Discord should be right there. Um, and so, and what you do is go to my Discord, and then you can, and since Captain George is with us right now, send Captain George a, a direct message, uh, and then he'll get the he'll get the word out. Uh, cause I absolutely, you know, I, I trust you, uh, you know, I've, I've known you long enough to think, I don't think you're trying to pull a fast one on me. Um, 
Uh, Mary says, my day's been pretty good. Awesome to hear. Um, uh, Dahak86. I'm sure I'm butchering your name as well. And Hey, man, just logged in. What's the story? The story is writing today sucks. And not only that, but uh, I have Romulan Ale and I have a Dalek printing on the printer that's looking pretty darn good. So, um, what is Captain Kirk's Discord? I don't know if I did. I would be on it. Um, or you mean Captain George? <laughs> or Cap if you, but if you go to my Discord in the link below, Captain George is listed as the director of social media on that, on that uh, uh, Discord server. How can writers write good movies, good uh, TV, TV shows when uh, the stories are already d done? <laughs> yeah. Tyler says, printing another Dalek. Yeah, well, I haven't gotten a, a successful, complete Dalek that I haven't aborted midway through printing. Um, you know, this was my first attempt at a Dalek print. And I'm going to demonstrate some of the problems with this one uh, once that one's done in a video. Um, Nerdotic says, hmm, for the, for, uh, the time the first... Two were fine. Good moments, nothing great. Missed costumes have not held up well. Last stand sucked, except Kelsey is Beast. Um, okay, I'll, I'll agree with you that Kelsey Grammer as Beast was a brilliant piece of casting. But yeah, I will say this. I don't particularly care for the X-Men films at all. Because in no way, shape, or form are they true to the source material. Uh, and in fact, the X-Men, the whole... you know, And especially... I, now I, I and now keep in mind, uh, Nerdrotic, I don't. I've stopped reading comic books in the 1990s when, in my opinion, they started going to crap. However, um, the uh, the thing is, is that the X Men uh, were always a metaphor for racism in this country. They, for some reason, tried to turn that into homosexuality in the movies. I don't think that works as well. Uh, quite frankly, I, I, I think it makes less sense and i also uh think that they the 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 costumes weren't there the real the, the essence of their powers weren't there they really didn't give a crap about any of their personalities except for wolverine and that's just because they knew that wolverine was going to be popular but the thing is it's a hugh jackman it's freaking what six foot two wolverine's supposed to be a little guy I'm sorry. I, not that Hugh Jackman, especially in the in uh, the the last two solo Wolverine films, not that Hugh Jackman did a bad job in the part, but that part was not Wolverine. And this is something that a lot of people miss the point of: is that Wolverine is supposed to be the kind of guy that you see him threatening you and you're laughing, because the guy is like you know five feet tall. And, but then his claws pop out and he turns into a beast. So, um, I, uh, so I, I did not like that about that at all. Darth Kilhoon says hello on his stream. Oh, is he streaming right now? Tell him to stop streaming when I'm streaming. That jerk. Uh, and yes, I know the lighting is a bit dark. I don't know. It's the stupid webcam. I'm going to have to get a, a new webcam when I can. Uh, Ant Tracker, I said fantastic writers in other genres. I, I didn't mean film. I meant actual books. Okay, fair enough, Xavier. Uh, not being a big book reader, I will take your word on that. How's your latest plaque? It actually came out fairly decent here. Um, and so there, it's not perfect, but I kind of like the way it came out. Uh, the only thing is that some of the some of the text is a little too shallow. I'm actually trying a version with raised text that I'm going to print after the... Um, uh, after the Dalek is done printing. It's five foot three in the comics. Thank you, Nerdronic. Yeah, I knew he was short. I couldn't remember exactly how tall, but yeah, and he's but he's he's supposed to be the feisty little guy, not the big buff massive dude that looks like he can kick your butt. The Phoenix versus Thanos with Gauntlet in a straight fight. Um if you're talking well well Based on, and, and I think Nerdrotic would probably back me up on this, the, the Infinity Gauntlet gives you infinite power in six different aspects of reality. I, and while the Phoenix Force is a cosmic level being that could destroy the universe, I would dare say that if you were wielding the Infinity Gauntlet, that would put you a level above Phoenix. Because, I mean, after all, Thanos defeated Eternity, which is the living embodiment of the universe itself. So I don't think that Phoenix uh, would last any longer. Uh, yes, Gary loves his costumes, gets really upset about the real costumes aren't used in the shows when comics aren't always... I, you know what, here's the thing, I, I agree, it, and the, if you look at 
the Marvel films. They absolutely proved beyond a doubt that if you put a little bit of clever costume design into it, you can make comic book accurate costumes. The problem is this, everybody thought, oh, you just need to put the guys in spandex that's painted like the suits. No, look at Captain America. He looks freaking awesome in the movies, and they stuck true to the costume. They just didn't go with, oh, he's wearing spandex. They made, they made it make sense. He's basically wearing padded armor, which does make sense. Um, the only two people watch Darth Kilhoon playing Star Wars over. <laughs> well, then tell him to just come on over here. Um, by any chance, does anyone know why they killed Jetsia Dax in the last season of DS9? They were prepping a story with Jetsia being pregnant with Worf. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. I assume that she wanted to leave the show or there were some contract breakdowns as far as pay, uh, pay. I mean, that's what usually ends up happening. Wouldn't Tom Hardy be a better fit as Wolverine? Tom Hardy would be, and you know who would have been really good if he was a, if he was a little bit younger would have been Jack Nicholson. Uh, Jack Nicholson would have made an awesome Wolverine when he was younger. Um, comic book shows and films leave out the costumes these days. 20 years in, it's ridiculous. Back then, they still had some evolving to do. Agreed, uh, nothing like the X-Men in comics. Yeah. And uh, Mary is throwing out Nerdrotic's channel out there. By all means, if you're not a subscriber, check out his channel. He's definitely worth it. Um, but yeah, the, um, the, the, the X-Men, I don't understand why... I mean, well, I mean, here's the thing. Fox... You know, Fox has produced the Fantastic Four and the X-Men. And the Fantastic Four at least looked something like the comics. Uh, the X-Men, of course, didn't. Um, but if you look at, on the Marvel side of things, and heck, even on the DC side of things, the films that are iconic and were incredibly successful, and we're talking like Superman the movie, we're talking about Tim Burton's Batman, we're talking about uh, the Sam Raimi Spider-Man films, of course, every film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and um, even, uh, you know, the, you know, like Wonder Woman uh, and... Uh, to a lesser extent, Man of Steel and Batman v Superman. All these films had something in common. And that is that the characters looked like the freaking characters they were supposed to be. Now yeah, they tweaked it a little bit. They changed a little bit. Maybe they could look better on film. But they didn't change the core of who these characters were. And yet on Fox, they're like, hmm, they wear these really bright, uh, varied costumes to distinguish themselves from the others. Now nah, let's throw them all in black leather. And then we'll throw a cheap joke about it in the middle of the movie. Um, hell, it took him four X-Men movies to get Magneto's helmet correct. You're absolutely right. And uh, any new Foley recordings? Uh, well, he, was, he, he did a couple of things yesterday on the show. But I don't have it, like, uh, edited yet or anything. Um, Thomas says, I heard it was a contract dispute. That would not surprise me because that's usually what causes those kinds of things as far as cast changes. Uh, why spam other channels here? <laughs> well, first of all, uh, I say that because I Nerdronic is uh, has a really good channel, and so just like I've said that about Misanthro Pony, if you're Brony, you got to check out Misanthro's Ponies, or if you just want to see a really good review of the Last Jedi, uh, definitely Misanthro Pony's channel is the place to go. And so um, they couldn't even use Jadzia image in a flashback scene in the final episode. That's yeah, you know, yeah. Don't get me started. Uh, and speaking of Captain Foley, he has arrived, which, hold on, I gotta, one of these, I'm gonna have to set up an official Captain Foley greeting here, but for right now, we're just using, uh, let me bring this up, and I figured that you were like, you know, off in your, in your cave somewhere since you never responded to me on Facebook today, but, you know, that's okay, that's okay. Uh, let's see. All right. We're getting close. Where is man? Okay. I got, I definitely got to go through this stuff. Ah, right, here we go. Oh, I've done far worse than kill you, anti-trekker. I've hurt you. And I wish to go on hurting you. I shall leave you as you left me, as you left the commander, marooned for all eternity in the center of a dead YouTube channel. Buried in comments. Buried in comments. <laughs> 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 I 
All right, and so yes, the legendary Captain Foley of Trek Yards is here. So good to see you, my friend. And so, uh, which is kind of cool because Nerdrotic, I don't know, Trek Yards, if you've seen Nerdrotic's channel or not, but if you like, I don't, uh, and I don't know, but if you like comic books at all, you need to check out his channel. Um, and so, uh, and Nerdrotic says he shouts out Anti Trekker all the time. Well, of course he does because I'm so freaking awesome. So, um, so much spite. Yes, Trek Yards is, is, a, is a crazy, mean old man, but that's okay. I'm meaner and older, so I guess it all evens out. Uh, which is a waste? Batman Forever, Batman and Robin as movies? The answer to that sci-fi Sith is very simple. Yes. I mean, Batman Forever and Batman and Robin were both very, very bad. I, if I had to only pick one to throw in the dumpster fire, it would probably be Batman and Robin. Uh, I'm sorry, but George Clooney as Batman was the worst. Um, and, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger was at his absolute worst in that film. Um, if I'm getting... Am I thinking the right one? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that uh, that was horrible. <sighs> but yes, um, but and I, and I don't know if, what, how Nerdrotic feels about it, but... I definitely think both the Schumacher Batman films were horrible. Um, but yes. Uh, to be honest, I troll fandom cosplay live streams because usually retarded fellow troll friend who shares this with me. Well, we both followers now. LOL, you are my people. <laughs> I miss the way conventions used to be. I'll tell you, you know, I do too. Uh, the first convention I went to uh, was back in uh, the late 70s. Um, and then my favorite convention was actually in 1982, a convention in Northern California called Octacon. And uh, the guest of honor was George Lucas. And we got to see some footage from Revenge of the Jedi that did not make it to Return of the Jedi. It was an absolute blast. Uh, did he at least do a passable Bruce Wayne? If you're talking about George Clooney, absolutely not. George Clooney was horrible in the role. You could tell he was phoning it in as both Bruce and, Bat, uh, and Batman. He was horrible. Val Kilmer actually put some effort into it and wasn't horrifically bad, but the movie was horrifically bad. And so that the... Uh, the but then, you know, that's just the way it goes. Uh, yeah, your mom says, F CBS, and that got blocked by the YouTube bots and says, sorry for the bad words. That's okay, I understand. You know, that's why I have my CBS Sucks Cup. Yes, yeah. Why did Storm use an umbrella in the Phoenix trailer? LOL. You know, that's funny, Russell. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, why would Storm ever need an umbrella? Couldn't she just make it not rain? That is so funny. I, ne I didn't even think of that. Oh, man, now I feel stupid. Any thoughts on Joker movie after more processing? Um... Honestly, no. Uh, I, I I know some people like they see the makeup over and over and they say, "Oh, it kind of crows on me." Not me. Uh, to me, it still doesn't look like Joker. Um, nothing about the, the from what little we've seen makes me think this is going to be awesome. However, I will see with an open mind. Joaquin Phoenix is an incredible actor, and if it has some good writing behind it, it could be great. But hey, I don't know. I was only 17 in 1982. Well, you actually then uh, have a couple, but only a couple of years on me. And uh, But yeah, uh, I, it was uh, Octacon in 82, man. It was so cool. Um, was anybody else agreeing that Anti Trekker looks like Mick Foley? Who is Mick Foley? I don't even know who Mick Foley is. I'm sure it's going to be incredibly insulting as I look it up here. Uh, Mick Foley. Michael Francis Foley Sr. is an American author and former professional wrestler. I don't think I look like him at all. <laughs> uh, at least it's not insulting, though. It's not like he looks like Quasimodo, but no, I don't think I look like that. Uh, Jaegerbaum throws five bucks into the chat. Thank you so much, my friend, and says... Uh, do you think that the DCEU can bounce back? May I seed a turd in two tracks? You certainly can. 
And we'll talk about the DCEU in just a moment here. Of course, now, I, I tried to time it right, but now the, every now and then my broadcaster likes to freeze when I click on it, so I got to stall and hope that it catches up. Come on. There we go. Well, um, all right. Well, let's beam down to the planet. Um, energize, Mr. Scott. Hi, Captain. <laughs> Welcome aboard the USS Discovery. There's got to be some kind of other universe, right? Please, send me back. Oh my god, send me back. I beg you, no, send me back. Oh. <laughs> it is. All right, so Jaeger, to answer your question about the DCU, no, I don't think, I think it's too messed up at this point um, to, to really make an effective comeback. What I think Warner Brothers seriously needs to do is to scrap everything that's not completed, which basically means scrap everything that is not Aquaman at this point. And then, uh, and then bring in a person in a similar role as Kevin Feige to be in charge of the DC film universe moving forward. All stories must go through this one person. The main qualifiers for this person is that he has to know and care about the lore of the, uh, of the DC universe. And basically, just like Kevin Feige, he needs to actually give a damn. And if you do that, you can build a DC universe. And yes, it'll be behind the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but... If you do it right, it'll be freaking awesome. And all of us that were that were really excited about the DCU when it launched will forgive them if they scrap it and DC Universe 2.0 is awesome. I will be more than happy to forgive Warner Brothers if they just scrap the whole thing and start it fresh and do it right. And if, if they can't do that, then screw them. They need to just stop trying to make superhero movies because they suck at it. And all you have to do is look, I mean, the Superman franchise died after Superman 2. The Batman franchise died after uh, Batman Returns. And then, you know, in the Dark Knight franchise, well, I think, it, honestly, it's a little overrated. It was just that they were good movies that weren't really superhero movies. And, uh, and that's why they worked. But, the, uh, but DC can't get a freaking franchise off the ground because they don't understand what makes them work. So uh, they need to bring somebody in to be in charge of it. Best Batman, Batman 1989 and Batman 2. I, I disagree. I think the best Batman was actually, um, I, I actually really liked um, Alec, uh, Alec Baldwin. Jeez, uh, uh, I can't believe I'm forgetting his name. The new guy. Uh, ben Affleck. Uh, I, I actually think he's the best Batman. I just don't think he's been in the best Batman movie. Uh, how about the Creed 2 trailer? Haven't seen it yet, but I don't need to see the trailer to be excited. I'm looking forward to Creed 2. Uh, Mick Foley was a great wrestler. Never saw him fight. I'm not into wrestling. So, um, what's up, Andy Trekker? Didn't get notification. F YouTube. Ah, uh, well, good to see reality. Tomorrow night, I'm going to show you this. I want to get your opinion on it and see what you think, uh, looking at it live. And, um, and hopefully I'll have another version to show you as well. Foley is God is what they chant. Oh, what in, in what exactly? Um, uh, all DC does is remake after remake. Well, that's that, that's because they don't care. They genuinely don't care. Trek Art says Wonder Woman worked. Wonder Woman worked to an extent, and just like I think I think Man of Steel actually worked, and I actually liked elements of Batman v Superman, but they don't the studio does not give a damn about the franchise. That's the problem. And that's the difference between, like, if you look at Marvel Studios and their relationship with Disney, think of Disney as Warner Brothers, and then Marvel Studios is, of course, a subsidiary of Disney. Warner Brothers needs to create a DC Studios to just make DC films, just like uh, Marvel and Disney's uh, relationship. So you don't get the executives of Disney trying to tell you what to do with a Marvel movie when the people at Disney don't know crap about Marvel. Same thing with Warner Brothers. The executives of Warner Brothers don't know jack about Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, Green Arrow, Aquaman, or any of these guys. But 
if you create a company solely around that product and you and you get people on board in that company that are are committed to that product you can make it work um Sci-Fi says, Andy Trekker, the 1989 Joker from Batman or the Dark Knight Joker from 2008. That's, they're very, very different. Um, I would actually have to go with Jack Nicholson's Joker. Uh, as much, I know Heath Ledger is, I, is iconic in his performance as the Joker, but I really liked uh, I, the, the Jack Nicholson's performance. It, that was the, comp except for the fact that he was physically wrong for the part, he was the comic book Joker. Uh, after the transformation, of course. Uh, James Pace, wannabe photographer, says, What's up? I'm renting solo while I uh, reciprocate from gall... I, oh, recuperate, I assume you mean from... Not reciprocate, from gallbladder removal surgery. I have episode five on standby. Oh, man, I'm sorry, man. There's nothing worse than having to go through surgery. I've done it a couple of times, so I'm so sorry, man. Um, so Mary's, uh, let's see. Or uh, actually Captain George sci-fi sits down. They're kind of funny coming from you. And I thought you didn't have a sense of humor. Uh, I, what did, what I, I must've missed. What did sci-fi say? Oh, Captain George always kissing Disney's butt by saying that Star Wars, the last Jedi is great moving Disney canon and better. Yeah. Well, you know, Captain George is, he's a shill, but that's okay because he runs the, my social media stuff very well. So I can accept that. Uh, Mary says exactly in all cops caps. So I'm not sure exactly what she's referring to. Man of Steel was way better than Batman v Superman. I tr attribute the, to the involvement of the Nolan brothers. I don't uh, because I think that no, the Nolan's uh, involvement with it was very very limited. I still th I think that was a Zack Snyder film through and through. Um, the problem was that they tried to blow their wad with Batman v Superman, where they tried to take the death of Superman and the Dark Knight Returns, two of the most iconic stories of two of the most iconic characters and roll them into one movie. That was a huge mistake. Either one of them would make a great movie, but neither one of them would be appropriate for their first movie together. Um, and I know I did a video about this before, but the basic truth is that what Warner Brothers needed to do was, okay, they did Man of Steel. It was a, good, it was a really good movie. I liked it. Then they need to do a Batman film. Okay, then you can do a Batman v Superman type of film where they end up on opposite ends. Of, like, say they're both working the same case. And in fact, I would probably base it off of since Man of Steel is loosely based on the John Byrne run of Superman with the same name, Man of Steel. You base it on John Byrne's uh, having their first meeting, and their first meeting was actually kind of interesting. They didn't like each other very much, and when they they never actually fight. But when they first show up, they're working on the same case, and Superman flies in, and he's like, look, Batman, I don't approve of your methods. You're breaking the law. I'm taking you in. And Batman's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Before you touch me, you should know that I rigged up a device that will detect super dense material touching my body. In other words, you. And so why don't you scan me with those fancy eyes ears? And Superman says, oh, yeah, I can see it. And he's like, yeah. So you touch me. Guess what's going to happen? A bomb's going to go off somewhere in the city, and that bomb is going to kill an innocent person. And so Superman can't touch him. And they go through this adventure together, and at the end, after they take care of the bad guy, I think it's Magpie, if I remember correctly, after they take care of that, Superman's like, you know, I, really, I still really don't approve of your methods, but I understand why you do what you have to do. But we have to talk about that bomb. And Batman's like, oh, yeah, the bomb. And he reaches into his utility belt, pulls it out, and hands it to him, and goes, there you go. And Superman's like, wait a minute, you were the innocent person that was going to get killed? He goes, well, I couldn't take a chance that you could detect if I was lying. And so that was their first meeting. I think you could have made a movie out of that. Uh, so after you do that, you do a Wonder Woman movie, you do an Aquaman movie maybe, even do a Cyborg movie, then do a Justice League film, bring them all together as some big threat hits, hits the world. And... Then you start getting into sequel movies. And when you start doing the sequel movies, that's when you start working up towards the death of Superman. And you make the death of Superman hit hard. You don't make it last for 30 seconds. And so what you do is at the end of Death of Superman, when Doomsday takes out Superman, you leave him dead for the next few films. And then you, and you can even do the Reign of the Superman story. And then you bring him back. 
All right, so you bring him back like two years later after you've seen films of people dealing with the fact that he's gone, as opposed to the next film, you just bring him back. And then you have Batman retire and say, I'm not doing this anymore. You go for a couple more years and do some more films, but then you do Batman Returns. Or Dark, The Dark Knight Returns. And you have Superman and Batman's final showdown be the last film with those two people playing those two parts. So, sorry. I, I know I, that was quite the tirade, but I, I apologize. Uh, so, um, let's see. I rejected. I, I get rejected because I voted for Trump. Is there a group or anything? I'm a bit long in the tooth and I remember going into conventions for cosplay and took uh, could talk nerdy stuff if you get rejected because you voted for Dr trump um uh tro troletta tro troloita how, how will you say your name uh i would highly recommend when you get a chance uh you need to put in a five dollar super chat and request uber chat number five because that is just for you my friend uh, i actually created it for chronos but if, it, i think you'll like it um Jaeger wants a Red Hood film. I wouldn't mind seeing a Red Hood film, but like I said, it's not about the story as much as the universe. We need to build a universe, and they don't understand how to do that over at Warner Brothers. That's why they need to create a sub-group just for that. Uh, Captain George said, you might be blind. I, uh, I could see everything happening. Solo was a mess before Ron Howard fixed the film. Solo is a great 7 out of 10 film. Wow. Seven out of ten, I think, is a little generous. I honestly would probably give Soup uh, Solo at best a six out of ten. Uh, probably more like a, a 5.5, just better than average, but not much. Uh, just enough to where I'd say, well, it's, it's you know, not a negative to have seen it. Um, but not, not really much of a positive either. Um... I'm blind. Fix. He could have saved the film just because we disagree makes me blind. Who's Pope? <laughs> Who made you the Pope of Isa? Don't get don't get too serious now, guys. Please. I I know you're having a disagreement, but please don't get too serious. I don't want any hurt feelings. Uh, and you like? Okay, you've seen number five. Well, in that case, cool. I just want to make sure you've seen that because uh, you you just made me think of that when you said about the Trump voting. Uh, the Phantom Menace was the greatest. <laughs> ah, 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 Don Juan. Stop it. Besides, I think, I'm sure Captain George already has me saying that. Um, I wasn't that big on uh, the Shazam trailer or the Harry Potter, but if Warner Brothers wants to go into Magic Realm, I would love to see, um, I can't even pronounce that name, the demon in some form. I, I agree, but the Shazam trailer looked horrible. Oh, it looks so bad. I, and I'll tell you, when I showed that trailer to Mrs. Antitracker, you know what? The, there was one moment that absolutely shocked her. And that was at the very end when she realized this is a freaking movie. She thought this was a series on the WB. She was like, wait a minute. You're, you're serious? They're actually going to put that crap in theaters? And don't get me wrong. I'm not hating on the show. But Black Lightning looks better than Shazam. And Black Lightning is a micro-budget WB show. Mary would give Solo a 3 out of 10. She's a little less forgiving than me. Um, and Josh, uh, Josh Street says, if Solo edited the 95 mark, it would have been a 6.5 out of 10, but it's a three. I would have given it a, a good seven out of 10 if it ended at the 95 minute mark. That was, and I know I said that in my review, I liked the movie up until 90 minutes. And then when all of a sudden, uh, Emphrey's Nest became the Benetton ad, I was done. And everything they did after that was absolute crap. And then, oh, I'm going to betray you, and I'm going to betray you, and I'm going to betray you, and I'm going to betray you. And it was, oh, geez, whatever. Better than The Last Jedi out of 10. I will grant you that one. That's 100% true. But then again, looking at a steaming pile of my avatar is better than The Last Jedi out of 10. That should be an official score on movies. Something that really sucks, but it's not that bad. <laughs> um... Uh, Andy Trucker, my girlfriend just asked me what I'm watching. She just told me she watches your videos, but she didn't know you did a live stream. I, I had no, I had no, she watches you and I'm in love again. <laughs> well, I'm glad that I could help bring you and your girlfriend together. So, uh, you'll have to, you'll have to tell me your girlfriend's name and I will say hi. 
Um, Etrigan. Okay. I, I, I'm going to forget it in 30 seconds, but thank you, Liger. I miss the old days before our conversations became commercialized and, so, uh, and subsequently politicized. I am no happy escape anymore. Um, well, our conversations aren't commercialized. Are you talking about because I told you to give me a super chat? But so don't give me a don't don't give me a super chat. Just you know, that's all right. Um, Monsieur Gaston says, "Have you guys discussed the three-year extension for Kathleen Kennedy's contract with Lucasfilm?" Not directly, no. And <sighs> I, you know what? I think that this is a way for her to be able to exit with grace. To be honest with you, I th I think that in three years she will be gone. Uh, this is my honest ass assessment of it. I'm not, you know, I know a lot of people said, oh, Kathleen Kennedy's getting fired. And I was like, nah, whatever. I'll believe it. But here's what I'm reading out of this. One thing that they never, ever do in Hollywood is say that someone is committed to be working at this studio for the next three years. They never, ever say that. So why are they doing that? Because they want to make sure they're saying, oh, we're not going to fire her because of all the crap that happened with The Last Jedi. However, three years from now, she's gone. And I don't think that she's going... To, and plus, they've scaled back on Star Wars production. I think that the, this is just her graceful exit. Um, I, genuinely, I genuinely do. Um, emphasis on the micro-budget. The budget is so low they could sue CW for money. Yeah, Black Lightning. And, and the thing is, Black Lightning is not a horrifically bad show. And, but, and, and I will say this. Black Lightning looks better than frickin' Shazam!, Thomas Potts throws four ninety nine into the chat. Thank you so much. It says, did you see the love light in Spock's eyes? The fright computer finally came along. I love that line from the ultimate computer, my friend. And Uber chat number five. So this one's going out to our friends who voted for Trump. So, um, does anybody really know why we're fighting anyway? Well, um, I think, hey, didn't he vote for Trump? Hmm? Get him! Get him! Get him! So remember, if anyone has an opinion, they're probably wrong. Now we, we know. know! And knowing is half the battle. G.I. <laughs> so there you <laughs> I do love that one. Um, Better Than Last Jedi is, in fact, a very low bar. That is true. Uh, there is no escape. Um, her name is Rebecca. Hey, Rebecca. Michael J. Crawford, the Anti-Trekker here. And I am honored that you're watching the show. And uh, and I'm, I'm thrilled that you've been watching my videos. But definitely hang out with your boyfriend. You guys can grab something to eat. Watch the live streams together. Let it bring you closer together. And you can let your nerdy bonds blossom. And so... May the blessings of a thousand Klingons grace your blood wine or something. I don't know. Okay, guys. <laughs> but no, seriously, Rebecca, thank you. Thank you for joining. And absolutely, get involved in the, in the chat. We need you. We need more girls. Not enough of them. Mary can't hold the fort down by herself. Come on. Um... Jaegerbaum, three people may, this is from Captain George, may see the episodic episodes that's like comparing to Rogue One to Force Awakens. There are two different beasts altogether. Oh, okay, so you're still fighting about that stuff. Okay. Trolletta says, I'm a libertarian. I tend to be as well. Uh, honestly, I'm a lowercase l libertarian, and when I say that, I mean that I don't let my political ideology dictate my opinion on something. And this is something that pisses me off about people across the board. And, and when it comes to the, um, uh, it doesn't matter if you're, if you're left, right, or whatever. If you are a liberal or you're a conservative or you're a libertarian or you're green party or whatever you are, think about an issue before you just go with the party line or the ideology. Think about what you're going to say before you just throw some stupid opinion out there. Look, libertarians, from a philosophical, ideological perspective, believe that the government shouldn't do anything other than infrastructure and defending the borders. Does that mean that there's no such thing as a good government program? Hell no, it doesn't. But 
So I, if, if I take everything on a case-by-case -case basis, but I will say that if the government doesn't have a compelling reason to do it, it ought not do it. That is my opinion as far as why I'm a minimalist. However, I'm not going to be an absolutist when it comes to that because I'm not a dumbass. Unlike, unfortunately, every freaking ideologue in this country. In the meantime, thank you so much, Reality Strikes. So it's 10 bucks into the chat. It says, shot, 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 shot. Where's my Airwolf Super Chat? M1, blinded by the light. Well, first of all, I know I got to get the Airwolf Super Chat done. I'm so sorry it's been taking me so long. Um, but to you, my friend, Reality, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And guys, I had a drink to help me through it, but... You guys, I hope you have your bleach ready. And by the way, Rebecca, if you haven't seen this before and you've ever seen Lore Reloaded's channel, you may want to close your eyes. I may have a s***. It's not clean. Repeat, I do not have a clean s***. Take the bloody s***. Amazing what you can do with some Home Depot lights, a wig, a prop gun, and a leaf blower. <laughs> That's honestly how we made that. Uh, Josh says, what's up with the rumors of a Vader movie that takes place between episode three and four? I do not care about the story. What I care about is that they try to make a good movie first. Uh, and that's the problem. And that's really, I mean, and, and that's the same problem that Warner Brothers that Lucasfilm has. They don't get the idea that the first thing they need to do is make a good movie. And they, they lost that with Star Wars. And so, you know, and, and let's be real. If they make it compelling, well acted, interesting and exciting, you can literally do a film that tells the story of Porkins and it'll be an awesome movie. But if they keep putting out movies that are either offensive, boring, or just pointless, they're going to kill the franchise. So, uh, man. Um, so, uh, there's certainly untold beauty about this lore film. <laughs> I don't know if I would agree with you on that. Oh, man. Come up with any uh, new words to be our reality. That's not start. Um... Movies are no longer works of art. They're commercial products that make use of artists. Well, that's the truth about movies from the beginning, though, Waspinator. I mean, here's the thing. Um, it, there's nothing wrong with art making money. Uh, heck, look at this shirt. I think this shirt is great, right? This is a hilarious shirt. This is a work of art. And it's a work of art designed to make money, as is most works of art. This bottle that I bought 
is a beautiful work of art, but it's also designed to make money. And that's the case with a lot of products. And I'm okay with that. What I'm not okay with is when they, uh, and, and this is the problem, if the sole purpose of like this bottle actually has practical use to hold liquid. Um, however, the uh, film is meant purely for entertainment. And if you're not going to care about making a good film, you just throw it out there, then you're, you're, you're defeating the purpose of your art. And, you know, I have no problem with art being profitable. What I, what I have a problem with is crap art being profitable. Um, ah, so that's where the problem lies with anti-trickery. He does not like low stakes movies. That's not, it's not necessarily even the stakes. The fact that Solo isn't about the universe in jeopardy doesn't bother me. Uh, in fact, like, for example, um, Spider-Man Homecoming, low stakes film compared to the rest of the Marvel films. Loved it. Um, and I, it's not about necessarily how big the stakes are. It's about how interesting the characters are, how compelling the story is. You could, make, you could have made the entire solo film just the Kessel Run. And if it was well-written, well-directed, well-edited, and well-plotted, it would have been an awesome movie. And so you don't have to have a galaxy-spanning adventure going on 17 different planets and telling the story of how Han got his gun and how he met Chewie and how he got the Falcon and how he got his name. You don't, you know what? You could just tell a story about a guy who was trying to smuggle some spice from Kessel to wherever, called the Kessel Run, and somehow he did it in record space. Uh, which, by the way, is a load of crap from the original canon, but that's okay. Movies have never been about art, at least from a studio standpoint. Sure, some directors do want to make art, but studio execs don't care if there's, uh, if there's no return on investment. Well, that's that, but you see, here's the thing, someone. Art has always had its patrons. Heck, that's where Patreon gets its name, right? Is that the whole idea is uh, that you know, like Leonardo da Vinci would get commissioned by someone to make his art. He got paid, right? Artists have always, because everybody has got to make a living. And so it that's not the problem. Uh, studio executives wanting return on their investment, that only makes sense. Because why should they pony up the money for uh, movies, especially as movies are now, you know, ridiculously overpriced to produce? Uh, why shouldn't they want to make their money back? Because they'd be idiots if they didn't, and all the studios would go out of business. However, they they need to um, they need to be focused on making a good movie, and instead they're focused on hitting a certain checklist of points that they think is going to make the money, without realizing that what really makes movies successful is not whether or not you hit these checkpoints; it's whether or not the movie is good. That's what matters. Uh, Star CBS would be able to make a good Star Trek show by making a Packlet series. Well, if it was well made, it would be certainly be better than Discovery. But then again, that's better than Discovery out of ten is about the same as better than Last Jedi out of ten. For you know, that's just the TV version. I may be naive, but I have faith that they'll fix Star Trek Discovery by mid-season. Just a feeling, or maybe I'm just drunk. I think you're drunk. Uh, reality says, anti Trek, I've got a bottle of Woodford for you. I have no idea what Woodford is, but I'll try it, as long as it doesn't kill me. Um, <laughs> if she ever stops laughing, she may log in. What, after seeing, uh, is that the first time she got to see Mega Chat number one? I hope her eyes are okay. Um, steaks are good, but I like movies with grilled chicken. Um, I prefer movies with steak. To be uh, sorry, sorry, Waspinator. I'm a, I'm I'm a, I'm definitely a, a steak guy. Uh, yeah, anyone who cares about Batman goes and messes up New York in the Marvel. Uh, let's see. Yeah, who cares about Batman goes and messes up New York in the Marvel universe? Not sure what you mean there, uh, Nexus. I'm, you got you got lost me on that one. Who cares if the movie sucks? Star Wars sheep would flock to see Solo, the unflushable turd. <laughs> Oh man, and uh, <laughs> I don't think so. I think Star Wars is really they they need to they they seriously need to focus. If they don't, 
the entire franchise is going down and Disney is going to lose their shirt on that investment. Um, but in, in all seriousness, they need to focus if they, because it's, you know, the fact that Solo lost money is not, not good right now. Chewie, a Star Wars story. Well, we got that kind of with Solo. I mean, that was a better movie for Chewbacca than it was for Solo. A movie about Porkins couldn't help but be art. <laughs> I got a problem here. <laughs> Porkins, starring Lore Reloaded. <laughs> <laughs> now, actually, Lore Reloaded would have to be the Rancor Keeper. That that would be an awesome movie, though. Cheese, no unshaven ball sack episode one. <laughs> oh, man. So how is it that anti trackers meaning re Reality Strikes tomorrow? What's the deal? Well, the deal is that Reality Strikes is visiting family in one state. He lives in another state, and Tennessee happens to be in between those two states. And when he drives through Tennessee, he's going to be coming right through the middle of the state where I happen to live, and we're going to uh, hang out. So that's that's and the second time he's he's been through the uh, well, actually the third time he's been through town, but the second time we've been able to meet up. Um, so the, uh, but yeah, and, and, and I've said this before, any of you, if you ever happen to be in middle Tennessee, Murfreesboro is like dead center of the state, but that's basically the gr part of the greater Nashville area. If you ever find yourself in middle Tennessee, let me know before you get there. And if it's possible, we'll meet up somewhere and hang out for a little bit. Uh, because absolutely, I, I you know, I, it's it's stage one of my conquering the world plans, uh, where I get to know a few of you if you happen to be through town. Stage two will eventually be we're going to start branching out and like meeting you guys across the country and hopefully eventually around the world. That would all that's my ultimate dream with this channel would be to meet each and every one of you guys. Um, which yeah. The actor for Vulture in Spider-Man Homecoming is Michael Keaton. Batman, uh, during all his interviews, he kept saying, who is Vulture? I play Batman. <laughs> I, did, I didn't see that, but I could see him doing that. Um, and the funny thing is he also played Birdman, of course. Um, so this is his, his third flying uh, creature-based superhero slash villain. Beef is better than chicken. Kyle, you win 100 internet points for that statement because you are 100% correct. Strange I didn't feel that Keaton was channeling Batman Bruce Wayne in the film. He wasn't, but it was really good. I mean, Keaton is actually a really solid actor. Uh, Sci-Fi says, please check out your private Discord page. I sent you a link to something. Oh, jeez, what'd you do now? You, you, you always make me nervous when you guys send me this stuff, and especially in the middle of a show. And what do you got here? <laughs> yes, I will check it out. I promise I'm going to. I, but thank you. Keep sending it to me, my friend. Um, and let's see. Where was I? Uh, what's the best place in Tennessee to hide the bodies of minor YouTubers? Um, probably Memphis. Uh, reality says anti-checker we should have an anti-checker con well no we'll just have an anti-con that's what we'll end up calling it and uh and, and actually that's something that i do another thing that i that i thought would be a lot of fun is, and, and in fact um uh uh darth revan when he was talking about hey you should come to ireland and come to comic-con in ireland if we can i would absolutely love to do that and we would call if we had like a little get together at a hotel or something during the convention we could call it the anti-con uh to just hang out with people and i think that would be so freaking awesome it would be better than the comic-con itself it would just be to be able to hang out and meet some of you guys bacon beat steak waspinator you're wrong Sorry, my friend. Uh, you know, sometimes you just get things wrong, and that's one of them. Um, bacon is seasoning to steak. Um, doesn't beat it, but it does help it. Um, and so, uh, troll is it Trolita or Troletta? Trolita, I'm assuming. Uh, says, you give me hope. I wish we could just talk about whatever franchise and not have to be afraid of offending somebody. I cannot discuss TOS without being considered a gender traitor. F that. Yeah, I, you know, I get so sick of people getting all worked up over that. Um, you know, I, I truly do. The, 
uh, as far as, you know, yeah, why can't we, we can have interesting conversations. We can even have outright fights about things and still not be hateful to each other. Uh, I mean, like I give King Waspinator a tough time and King Waspinator and I agree on practically nothing, but you know what? He keeps coming back and I love him. And I'm glad that he keeps coming back, and I'm glad he doesn't take it too seriously, even though we genuinely disagree on a lot of very serious issues. Um, you know, not just, uh, you know, ooh, you know, like, uh, you know, which episode of Voyager is the best, but also on, you know, deep, uh, deep topics like the existence of God and, and stuff like that. But that doesn't mean we can't have a good conversation and be friends. Plus the fact that he looks and sounds exactly like Commander or Commodore Matt Decker is icing on the cake. And if you don't believe me, check out one of it. Go right now to Waspinator's channel, subscribe to his channel, watch any of his videos, and tell me that's not Matt Decker. Especially if you're a fan of the original series. When in Ireland, I believe it's in August. Um, so I don't know if we're going to be able to do it next year, but if we can, we absolutely will. If we can't, we'll probably try to shoot for the year after. Um, so to do it for 2020 if we can't do it next year. But I absolutely love the idea. Uh, and I've always wanted to go to Ireland anyway. Uh, Star Trek V or Star Trek Discovery for Waste Star Trek? Uh, Star Trek Discovery, 100%. Star Trek V is horrifically bad, but it is at least not a complete insult to the fans. Uh, even though it's, it's insulting in how bad it is, it's not meant to be insulting. It's just really, really bad. One of the events at the Anticon should be the best con. That'll be the con-con portion of the Anticon. And so we'll call it the Anticon-con. <laughs> um, and so, for instance, I do not agree with the Anti-Checker that abortion should be mandatory for Asians. <laughs> um, okay, Waspinator. <laughs> Charlie says, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I really like you. Oh, no problem. And that's, you know what? We're here to hang out, have fun. And you know what? We can, yeah, there's some things we're going to we're gonna agree on. There's some things we're going to disagree on. But that doesn't change the fact that we are, as Xavier was actually took the words out of my mouth, we are nerds. And let me tell you guys something. And this is one thing I absolutely love about this channel. This is not the biggest channel. Probably never will be the biggest channel. But we are the channel of the outcasts. We are the channel of the people that didn't fit in. And that's okay because we are, you know, and that's why Star Trek is such an important part of our lives to many of us because of the fact that Star Trek was accepting, uh, especially the original series. If you look at the original series and you think about the fact that, you know, it wasn't necessarily ultra liberal while some people say it was it certainly wasn't ultra conservative as some people think it was but it was the whole point of it was that in the future we've gotten over not accepting people because of what race they are or what affiliation they are whether it's a religious affiliation or a political affiliation or whatever and i like the fact that they go out of their way to make sure that they're inclusive in just about everything not just race now, next gen, I think they lose some of that. Next gen, they're inclusive about race, but not belief. In the original series, they are clearly inclusive about belief as well, which I really, really like. And, but that's what brings us together. We're the outcasts. We're the we're the rejects. We're the people on a whatever side of the fence of whatever issue it is. But we tend not to fit in. But that's okay because we found each other, and thanks to the miracle of the internet, we can hang out and have fun. And you guys can give me all your money and hopefully get it to where I don't have to work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, meanwhile, Trolita throws four ninety nine into the chat. Thank you, Trolita. I truly appreciate it. it. Says, don't know. Pick something funny. And I just realized I didn't even have the list up there. Pick something funny, huh? Well, they're all pretty funny, but hmm. I'm gonna. You know what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go over here and we're gonna first we're gonna make you hurt for a second here. Let's see if Rebecca likes this one. Hey, you want to learn about Jesus? There's no such thing as hooker client confidentiality. Because, yeah, Rebecca, you thought the other one was bad. That's lore reloaded as a hooker.
Presenting the newest incarnation of the Joker! What? What are you talking about? That's not the Joker, that's just some... guy! Oh, right, uh, sorry. This is the new incarnation of the Joker! Oh, right! That oh my goodness, disgusting. it's Ronald McDonald's disembodied head! There you go, I gave you a two first since you threw five in there and those were the, the uh, regular Super Chats. So yes, Laura's a hooker and my opinion of the latest incarnation of the Joker. Meanwhile, Reality says, check general chat. Oh, what'd you do now? Uh, let's see. And let's see. Okay, yeah, <laughs> nerds, yes. Um, what was his name? Ogre or something or whatever. Um... So, we are Revenge of the Nerds grade here. Actually, Hollywood would not make a movie like the original Revenge of the Nerds today because of the Hollywood pol politics. In any case, we are the champions. Yeah. I agree. You know, it's funny. There are so many movies now that we consider classics that absolutely could not be made today. Um, and Revenge of the Nerds is one of them. Um, that's kind of sad. Uh, you know, almost anything by Mel Brooks could not be made today. Um Hollywood has become way too full of themselves. And by the way, that Dalek is starting to show. It's you know the 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 head is starting to come together. The eye stock is printing. This is exciting. I can't wait till it's done. Um, the bad joke looks more like uh, Bozo the Clown than Ronald McDonald. Well, my son is only eighteen. He's never seen Bozo the Clown, so. <laughs> Uh, don't forget about PCU. Um, I haven't seen PCU, so I don't. I don't know about that one. Blazing Saddles, yeah. I'm, and the thing is, Iron Wolf, Blazing Saddles is an anti-racism film, brilliantly done by Mel Brooks. I mean, I honestly, Blazing Saddles is probably my favorite Mel Brooks film. Um, I love that one. I love Young Frankenstein as well. But the but Blazing Saddles is so good, and yet. You could never make that movie today. People are like, oh, it's racist because you used the N-word. And it's like, did you not watch the movie? Mel Brooks is one of the few Jews to be brought, ever be brought up on charges for anti-Semitism. I didn't hear about that, but it wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me in the bit uh, at all. And that's the thing. What's wrong with making fun of yourself? Um, you know... And Mel Brooks has a sense of humor about who he is. He doesn't take himself too seriously. And it's just like, I mean, heck, I do it all the time. And not obviously not being Jewish or anything, but I mean, I make fun of us, the nerd community, all the time. And it's okay to have self-deprecating humor. It really is okay. And I get so sick of Hollywood with their collective sticks up their collective butts about this kind of stuff. What do you think of the two Mel Brooks versions of the producers? Um, I saw the original one way back, um, and I and I loved I loved the 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 whole thing was springtime for Hitler, um, but which of course that's and but I haven't seen like I didn't see the Broadway version or the remake. So uh, and I know the remake I believe didn't have the Broadway you know Matthew Broderick and um, can't remember who the other one was, but yeah. Um, did you like random movie I once saw? Um, possibly, unless I didn't. But if I did like it, I absolutely did. I will cry my heart out when he dies. I will call in sick to work. Not even kidding. I will be, uh, you know, that Mel Brooks is one that, yeah, I'll be sad because, I mean, while I didn't love all of his movies and some that people think are great, I'm not a big fan of, like Spaceballs. I think Spaceballs has some funny moments, but I don't think that it came from a genuine love of Star Wars. Whereas Blazing Saddles, to me, when I look at that, I think the reason it works so much better for me is that I could feel the passion of Mel Brooks on the, t on the topics and the subject matter that he was, that he was bringing up. Um, stress balls work best when you throw them at, at people annoying you. That is brilliant advice, Michael. I've never tried that, but next time I'm going to. Uh, John Favreau was in PCU. Uh, you're not going to sell me on it. <laughs> History of the World Part 1. That was a funny movie. Jews in Space. Speaking of space, I, I have one of my favorite spaceships here for some reason. It just happens to be on my desk. The Planet Express ship. Um, 
Uh, Nerd Roddick says, really, really hated random the random movie that you saw. Well, you know that random movie when you know the when I liked it, I really did like it. But when it was when I didn't like it, I genuinely didn't like it. And the thing is, is that the pacing was exactly what you would expect from a movie just like that. And the cinematography was absolutely on par with all the rest of the cinematography of that particular cinematographer. And the bottom line is of that random movie, it's very typical of what you would expect from that director with that studio. Uh, why throw space ball, stress balls? Why not snowballs with rocks? <laughs> Did they make Spaceballs 2 The Search for More Money? I say yes with Star Wars The Last Jedi. Spaceballs 2 The Search for More Money. Absolutely. Well, I, I remember, I, I actually did a video about it not uh, not that long ago about how uh, Kathleen Kennedy thinks that Spaceballs was the original Star Wars because if you look at The the Last Jedi uh, has and and even actually the all the new Star Wars has more in common with Spaceballs than the original Star Wars. History of the World Part 1 saw a copy for a few dollars and snatched it up a few years back. Yeah, it was, I haven't seen it in a long time. Uh, when will the Turdic try to destroy humanity? Well, this is actually a Dalek, not a true Turdic. However, I am thinking about a Turdic project that I think would be a lot of fun. Um, and so, uh, yeah, Random Movie was robbed at the Oscars. <sighs> you know, here's the thing. When a movie doesn't get nominated, it can't win an Oscar. And that's an absolute fact. I mean, you, you simply can't deny it. If you don't get the movie nominated, it cannot win. Uh, an apple a day will keep anyone away if you throw it hard enough. That is true, but bullets work better. So... <laughs> Oh, that random movie. You you got a thing going now with that. Talk about Zardoz. Zardoz was a freaking weird movie. Uh, I cannot believe Sean Connery was in Zardoz. <laughs> if you have not seen Zardoz, uh, if you happen to live in a state like California, Colorado, Oregon, or Washington, I or Alaska, or and I don't know where else, um, I highly recommend that you purchase a certain herbal supplement that is only available in said states in just large quantities of said herbal sup uh, supplement and then try to watch Zardoz. Uh, be believe me, uh, it will change your life. Um, so, <laughs> Colorado, is that, you live in Colorado, Texas? All right. Um, I've seen Zardoz and Sean Connery is Alice. I'm not sure what you mean there, Brad. Uh, you're gonna have uh, you're, you're, you're gonna have to explain that one to me. Uh, someone says, "Hello, oh, watching Zardoz while high as a hoot." <laughs> I've never done it. However, I don't know. You know, I, I yeah. Reality says, "Here you go," and throws in R4P and 1PY. I assume that's part of a web address, but not sure what you, what you know. You know, reality. Since you have a wrench, you can put a link in there. And he says, not Alice, Dorothy. Oh, as in, like, uh, like he went to Oz? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> People in the nerd community can be just as toxic as anyone else, and you have your own, and have your own blacklist. That's true, but that's what, that's one thing that I want to avoid, if at all possible, with this channel. And... Uh, I know that, yes, there are cliques within the nerd community. There are cliques within every community. And, um, you know, we do tend to get into this, uh, you're with us or against us. We do tend to get into this, oh, you like that, therefore you're bad, that kind of thing. And, I, uh, and, and you know, like, I, for example, you know, Captain George. Uh, I give Captain George a hell of a hard time because he actually uh, doesn't hate the new Star Wars, right? And, and you know, but, but Captain George is my director of social media. If I genuinely did not like Captain George, if I genuinely thought that he was less of a person because he happened to like movies that I don't, I would not have him running my Discord server. And so I have nothing but respect for Captain George, even though... I completely disagree with him when it comes to certain topics in Star Wars. 
So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I don't ever want this channel to feel like uh, anybody's not welcome. I understand that some people will be jerks. Like on the Discord server, there have been times when people have taken it too far and stuff. But you, everybody will always be welcome here. Uh, and, and I absolutely mean that. Uh, sorry, I meant Dorothy, Sean Connery's character in Zodaris with Dorothy. Yeah, I got it. I got it, Brad. Uh, yeah. I was saying earlier about how future X-Men character movies and how they thought that maybe Bishop movie with Idris Elba could be cute, cool. I, I could definitely see Idris Elba as Bishop. That could be freaking awesome. How big of a 3D print can you make with your 3D printer? Is the Dalek the limit? How big can you make something with your 3D printer? Well, with this one, um, the biggest it can go is 210 centimeters squared, which is roughly uh, about eight and a half inches squared. And so that is the absolute maximum size. Now, the, uh, the, the larger printer made by the same company that I'm seriously eyeballing getting because I've been improving my skills with PLA printing and would be a lot easier to get than the other printer that I'm going to continue to save up for. Um, the, the larger format one can do uh, 500 centimeters squared, which is something like about 15 inches squared, which is really, really big for a 3D printer that's not an industrial grade printer. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, so the, so the 210 centimeters squared is this one, the Ender 3. Um, but the other one that I'm looking at is, like I said, 500 centimeters squared, which is phenomenal. That's big enough to actually like print a helmet. Um, and I actually thought about, wouldn't it be cool, uh, to make some kind of evil supervillain helmet that's an amalgamation of like every supervillain ever. Uh, <laughs> Um, is the Dalek trying to escape? It kind of looks like he is, doesn't it? Uh, because the, the top of him is, is almost cut off there, uh, by the screen. But let me see if we can go, go to full scale there. So you can kind of see the print head there and where it's at. So the eye stock isn't quite done printing. Um, and, uh, you know, so, and those, it's interesting, those, those support structures that are hanging off of it. The, the interesting thing is going to be, how's that going to look when I remove those? Um, but yeah, the, it's definitely getting closer. Uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what that looks like when it comes off. And Mary says, hell yes, a helmet would be so cool. I'll tell you that there's so much, I, I, I really like the idea of doing and just, and so I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying the crap out of all that I've, I've learned here. And so, uh, to those of you that have helped me make this happen, thank you so much. And for the, uh, for those of you that have donated to the printer fund, uh, man, I can't thank you enough because I'm really looking forward to expanding on all this stuff. However, for those of you that are also, uh, and I don't think, uh, Foley is still with us right now, or if he is, he's just lurking. Uh, I need to get in touch with his 3d modelers cause he's got like people that do wonderful 3d modeling work for him. And I'm, I suck at it compared to some, a lot of people out there. Um, are, uh, are we, are the stage with 3d printing and we can cure the world's problems. Uh, I assume you can cure the world's problems for the need of resources. Uh, no, that, that 3d printing can only print plastic right now. And of course you can get, I mean, like there are certain experimental million, multi-million dollar, uh, uh, 3d printers that can print other substances like metals or even organic tissue, what that are, that's manufactured separately. But no, 3D printers can't actually create anything. And you like you can, uh, you know, you can I could basically make almost anything you can think of out of plastic. If species A four seven two invaded, you could kill them with super chat number one. Hmm. Are you sure about that? Are you absolutely sure? Uh, Brad Wolf says you're not the only one uh, enjoying the crap. <laughs> <laughs> you can eat plastic not tasty though well and i'll tell you and and this is where i'm uh, this is as far you know like i'm obviously no, no nobody's leftist or anything however um one of the reasons like there are there are a myriad of materials you can print with with 3d printing and one of the reasons I'm thinking about sticking with this type of printer as opposed to the resin printer, while the resin printer can do so much more detail and do some really cool things that this one just can't, 
Uh, I may hold off on that because this prints, so it's with a material called PLA plastic. Um, that's what uh, this and everything else that I printed, uh, it can actually print about a dozen different types of materials. There's like ABS and it can print a certain of forms of nylon and even a carbon fiber and there's some metallic substances you can get in it. However, PLA plastic is lightweight, it's relatively inexpensive, although it's really sturdy and it is in fact biodegradable. And so, uh, and that actually means something to me uh, because as I've been learning printing, I have lots of crap like this of failed prints that just like completely went nowhere. And uh, so while I'm gonna be wasting some plastic, I don't wanna be destroying the environment with, with what I'm doing here. Um, but yes, uh, let's see, no 3d printing is parsecs away from energy to matter conversion technology. Yes. Parsecs away as measured in star Wars technology, meaning, um, time <laughs> commander blockings does most of the rendering and track. Yeah. But well, I talked to, um, to captain Foley about it briefly on Facebook and he says he's got about a half a dozen people that help him out with the 3D modeling stuff. The rendering is actually relatively easy um, if you all you, if you understand the rendering engine you're doing and the settings and the effects of the settings. But where um, uh, the modeling, the 3D modeling is the challenging part. And I can, I mean, I, I'll tell you, I mean, I, I can do some basic... Um, uh, 3D modeling, like obviously the plaque, uh, I'll show you in Blender right here. This is the, this is the actual 3D model that I made of the plaque. It's very simple. You know, there's nothing special here. Um, and this is the raised text version that I'm going to try printing as soon as that Dalek is done. You can see the text actually is raised instead of sunken in. Uh, I want to see if that comes out better. Um, however, the, um, you know, something like that is a far cry from, say, uh, you know, a, a starship or a helmet or something like that. And and so that's where I'm going to be uh, asking for people to, to submit stuff because I think that it would, it would be awesome to create some user-created content that we can start sending out and stuff. I live in Mississippi. Is it tasty? I'll deep fry it and dip it in. <laughs> you can't deep fry uh, PLA plastic. It would melt. Uh, I want to eat your models. Yeah, they're, 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 I don't think they're edible. But yeah, that, that would be a bad idea for those of you that are thinking about eating the plastic. Don't do it. Why is it blockings? I can think of uh, another thing to make his, his name. His name is actually Cockings, not blockings. It's uh, so... But yeah, I made a joke uh, the other day with uh, Captain Foley calling him blocking cockings. Um, parsec is distance, not time. I know that, Captain George, but here's the thing. The way that Star Wars, not talking about episode number, I'm talking about Star Wars, right? 1977 Star Wars. That's what it was called back then when I freaking saw it in the theaters. Now... With the way that Star Wars was presented, when Han Solo said that the Falcon is the ship that did the Kessel Run in less than 12 parsecs, look at Obi-Wan's reaction. There's a reason for that. And it's one of those things called subtlety that people forgot about and completely ruined what was a beautiful moment in Star Wars. Um... Uh, and, and and I'll show you in just a second. Fun pack: the Borg are unable to assimilate you, the anti tracker Resistance is possible, and you're a lovable turd. <laughs> yeah. Um, carbon fiber, weird possibilities. Yes, you can actually print carbon fiber, and there's actually some flexible materials you can get. Uh, nylon, like I said, there's a lot of stuff you can print. However, some of the more exotic materials are actually uh, very, very difficult. Uh, Captain George wants me to show uh, something you put on Discord. All right, hold on, Captain. Let me see what you do this time. Oh, yeah, you're talking about the pictures? Yeah, so this is Captain George uh, has been experimenting with Blender as well. And uh, this is uh, a render very similar to the one I did, but um, 
I'm trying to. I'm I'm still the the Blender rendering engine is a little weird, and my computer is so old that it takes forever to render. So I'm looking for options with that. Um, but yeah, and so that's uh, that's one that he did, and let's say, and this is another one. That's a really nice shot of the Enterprise. Uh, and so, and those, you know, because there's two things that Blender is gonna that Blender is gonna help me for in this channel in the future. One is I'm going to be doing some 3D animations. If you can see behind the Dalek, uh, is the picture that I originally did that inspired Captain George's. Um, but you see that Star Destroyer in the Enterprise. I love the lighting in that shot. I think that's a really nice picture. But uh, I plan on doing a full-blown animation of that and doing a breakdown of an Imperial Star Destroyer versus a Constitution-class starship. However, my computer would take six months to render that, so I need to wait until I can get a new computer, uh, which so that'll probably be next year, uh, because I don't want to do it half-heartedly or, or half-assed. I want to I want to make it full-assed, if that's the thing. Um, anyway, but let me see. If I can get any of this to go. And that's not what we want. Go to. Now that's Dark Phoenix crap. All right. Star Trek. Science right, fiction, Star Wars. And you may be wondering why I'm taking so long, and it's mainly because I suck. All right. Star Wars de specialized. All right. And so, what I'm doing here, and just a second. Okay, so is we're going to find and of course this is if you have if if you own a legitimate copy because I would never recommend you break the law but if you own a legitimate copy of Star Wars which I'm sure all of you do I highly recommend you find and download the de-specialized edition it is a wonderful re-edit of Star Wars that basically restores it to uh the way it was originally all right here we are in the cantina and let's see It helps if we can hear it. Let me. Big Karelian ships now. She's fast enough for you. Myself? Myself? I've outrun Imperial starships. Sorry, I'm trying to find the. Turn that down for a second. All right, we're trying to find the actual reaction shot here. Chewie here tells me you're looking for passage to the Alderaan system. Yes, indeed. If it's a fast ship. Fast ship? You've never heard of the Millennium Falcon? Alright, so, right here we have, of course, Han Solo uh, talking to uh, Obi-Wan and Luke. And, of course, we have the whole thing where the whole purpose of what, what Obi-Wan and Luke are looking for is, of course, a fast ship. And so, um, we'll, and now the, the main thing to look for when we get to this reaction shot is Obi-Wan himself. And by the way, I'm not even, I know, you know, Lucas, uh, film may, or Disney may file a DMCA. Uh, if they do, uh, they'll, they'll back off because they always do. But let me, uh, let me go back here. Should I have? It's a ship that made the Kessel run in less than 12 parsecs. Look at Obi-Wan's face right there. You know what that face is? That face is, this guy is full of shit. Pardon my French. I know I don't cuss very often on the show. That is the face. Obi-Wan knows that Han doesn't know what the hell he's talking about because he knows that a parsec is not something that you can outrun. All right. Now, unfortunately, the subtlety of the scene was lost 
as they tried to then make excuses why he somehow made space shorter. And so he actually did go in less than 12. That's stupid. Han Solo, the whole point of this scene, for those nerds that were smart enough to understand what a parsec was, was the idea that he didn't know what he was talking about. He was just trying to throw something out there to impress Obi-Wan, and Obi-Wan being old and wise, and, and we all, of course, find out in the prequels, Obi-Wan is quite the experienced pilot himself. He knows that Han is full of crap here. And so, uh, yeah, I absolutely... Um, I absolutely love the way the scene was originally shot. However, then later on, as people were starting to argue about, well, why does it say that? Well, then the subtlety of the scene was lost and they just turned it into uh, how, well, they came up with some other reason that it actually was less than 12 parsecs. And that's just... Uh, stupid. And by the way, um, even like if you look at the way they did it in Solo, and I know they did it just because of that line that we just watched. However, I found it so laughable when they're getting ready to go to the refinery station and Lando is like, what? We can't do it. No one's ever made the Kessel run in less than 20 parsecs. Who talks like that? In the history of any, like, let's say, let's throw it into a real world here. Uh, you got to drive from, um, from say, uh, one city to another, and taking the established routes, it, it it's about takes about an hour to get there, and it's a forty mile drive, but you only have forty five minutes to get there. Now, are you going to say there's no way we're going to make it? You can't make that drive in less than 40 miles. Or are you going to say you can't make that drive in less than 45 minutes? It makes no sense to say it that way. Except to say, hey guys, we're going to do it in 12 parsecs. Whatever. <sighs> Sorry. And Captain George is saying, oh, I need to explain some things about Star Wars to you. No, you don't, Captain. We're going to disagree on this one. You're going you're gonna to give me all the explanations about how an expanded universe lore that came after this movie, uh, there was nothing before this movie in your EU crap. But there, but an expanded, you know, they're going to say, oh, he bent the laws of space and time by getting too close to a black hole, and that made it so that he could do it in less distance, blah, 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 blah. And I'm sorry, but that's all ad hoc. And that's all to try and explain something that doesn't need explaining. Um, and next is, so wait, though, in Star Wars, isn't Parsec time, not distance? No, well, it, the thing is, like I said, is that that was one thing that, you know, people that didn't understand the Parsec line, I got it back in the 70s. And granted, I was a kid that was a nerdy into science kid, but... Uh, a lot of people didn't understand because most people don't even know what a parsec is. And that's the funny thing about that line is it went over most people's heads because most people had no idea what a parsec was. And they just say, oh, well, okay, that's, an, that's a fun line. And they didn't understand why some people were getting all worked up about it. And so it would be like, like I said, is if I said, oh, there's, you know, hey, is my car fast? Let me tell you. I've made the drive from Murfreesboro to Port uh, Murfreesboro to, to Nashville in less than 40 miles. That's what he just said. That makes no sense because you know what? Even if you want to go through the whole thing about how he took a short, you know, let, for, let's just say that the intention all along was what we saw in Solo, that he took a shortcut through a cloud and that's how he got there quickly. How does that refer to how fast the Falcon is? It doesn't. It said he's a good pilot. It has nothing to do with the speed of the Falcon, Captain George. You want to explain stuff to me? Explain that to me. Because if you say, hey, you got a fast car? Fast car? <laughs> I made the drive from Tennessee to California in less than 500 miles. How does that tell you how fast my car is? It doesn't. It just tells you that I know a really good route to get to California. So it, 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 that doesn't matter 
as far as trying to explain it away. Either way, Han is full of crap. Either way, Han doesn't know what the hell he's talking about in the cantina scene, and he's simply trying to impress what he sees as a doddering old man and a stupid kid. And he doesn't realize that the doddering old man is smarter than he is. That's all it is. And so, and, and I understand, don't, and, and you guys don't think I'm hating on Star Wars because I love me some Star Wars, especially the despecialized edition. However, let's not pretend that Han is some mad genius when he was giving this dialogue. The fact is that Han was being an idiot. And he thought he was pulling a fast one on someone that was smarter than him. And he just didn't realize that he was talking to someone that was smarter than him. That's all it is. And it's, and, and, but, you know, I understand some people got to make a big old thing about how, oh, well, Han was actually correct. Um, and so, and so Captain George says, yep. Thanks, Anti Trekker, for adding another thing for me to make a video on. Why Last Jedi is not bad will be the first on the list. <laughs> I can't wait for that one. Uh, King Waspy says, I'll bet Lucas thought Parsec was a speed measurement because it has sec in the word, Nike, suck it. Well, except for this, Waspinator, is that if you. The, the thing about this film, the 1977 Star Wars, is it was written and directed by Lucas. Which means that that reaction from Obi-Wan that we just saw is what Lucas wanted. So I think that Lucas, I, and, and I, you guys know, if you, if you followed me for any length of time, you know that I give Lucas very little credit when it comes to his skills as a writer or a director, because he sucks at both. However, I think that he knew full well what he was doing. Because if he didn't, we wouldn't have had that you know, and, and I, I, got, I mean, just look at that face. He is in utter disbelief that Han is spewing out that level of diarrhea out of his face uh, while trying to sell him on how fast the Millennium Falcon is. So, uh, I'm sorry, that, that look is perfect. And also, look at Luke. Luke doesn't know what the hell is going on, but Luke isn't, is basically, he's, he's a gifted pilot, but he doesn't understand the, the details of space travel. He just flies around dusting crops, as, as Han says. And so that makes sense that Luke doesn't get it, but Obi-Wan, look at that face. Obi-Wan knows that Han is full of crap here. And so, and, and by the way, nice to see you, Mecha Random, uh, and thank you for agreeing with me. And, and so, Captain George, sorry, Mecha Random agrees with me, so game over. I got the girls on my side, so bam. Amy is going to be in Japan next weekend. I am insanely jealous, and you know, drawing for the fun of it just got back from Japan on business, but I am ridiculously jealous of you. I would, I would love to go to Japan someday. Although, unfortunately, I probably never will because I have no subscribers in Japan, apparently. So, everywhere else in the world, but not Japan. Mercer says, he's no less full of crap than Tony Stark having a suit of armor that grows uh, from a jogging suit. Well, the, the nanotech thing is, is, yeah, I mean, you can say what you want about it. I mean, some people love it, some people hate it. I didn't like it that much. I actually thought they took it too far. Um... But that doesn't make Tony full of crap. It just means that they took the tech too far in the, in the movie. Uh, we are on your side, anti Trigger. Thank you, Mary. See, uh, I'm telling you, George, I got the women on my side. Bam. And we all know based on, especially, you like The Last Jedi, that you should know that if the women are on my side, it's game over. <laughs> Oh, man. So, yes, if you want to defend The Last Jedi, you absolutely cannot attack me when I got the women on my side of the argument. Take that. And Admiral Brocode throws 10 of his fake Canadian dollars into the chat. Thank you so much, Admiral. Says, um, young at Captain George, only now, at the end, do you understand your feeble skills are no match for the power of the dark side. Now, young Captain George, you will die. And he wants everybody to suffer a little bit. And so, here we go. 
I may have a shit. It's not clean. Repeat, I do not have a clean shit. Take the bloody shit. The pain. But thank you so much, Admiral Brocode. I truly do appreciate it. And by the way, Kronos, thank you as well. I will stop my evil anti-rant, but thank you, my friend. And of course, you get to pick a couple there if you so choose. Um, but let me get caught up. I'm sure you said something already, but I, I need to get caught up on some comments here. Uh, Amy says, most of October and November on holiday. Amy, I'm... In I'm so jealous of you. Stops in Osaka, Tokyo, Vienna, LA, Portland, Oregon, Denver, Detroit, Vancouver, New York, and Taipei. Well, let me tell you, of all of those places, um, I would well, I'd like to visit almost all of them. Uh, Portland, Oregon, I lived in for like 20 odd years. I don't know if you've been there before. It's a beautiful city. And I hope that you have a great time. And if you care to indulge in various substances that are illegal in most of the country, they are readily available in Portland and legal, uh, as they are in Denver as well. But, and that's my, my daughter still lives in Portland. She loves it there. And, uh, but yeah. Can't you, James, make Emperor George watch Mecca, <laughs> Mecca number one? Well, yeah, I'm trying to make him suffer. Uh... A few comments about how their eyes are bleeding and all that good stuff. The way I see it, A New Hope is a pulpy sci-fi tribute to 40 sci-fi. It is, and it's also, I mean, it's got a lot of uh, inspiration from uh, various uh, but uh, from various sources, including 40 sci-fi. Obviously, uh, Joseph Campbell to, is a huge role in the inspiration for the story. So, yes. Uh, Mary is going blind. Sorry about that, Mary. But I gotta do what people pay me to do. I'm, I'm a cheap whore. Um, I'll be at Tokyo Dome on November 17th. Uh, Amy, stop bragging. I hate you. I know you're talking to... And I don't even know what, how to say that name because I can't read, speak any Japanese except for very, very little. I assume that's Japanese since you guys are both uh, talking about Japan. So, konnichiwa. Uh, I do not know <laughs> who you are, but konnichiwa, my friend. Um... Uh, let's see. Well, here. Star Wars Fundamentalist, the fandom menace, is becoming the Taliban of nerddom. No wonder you're also concerned about canon. Canon is a biblical term, after all. Uh, well, canon is actually not a specifically biblical term, but canonization is commonly thought of in the Bible because the Bible is canonized. However, canon sim is simply that which is accepted into the lore of a, a particular set of stories or whatever. And in the case of the Bible, it's what is accepted as actual scripture as opposed to extraneous material. Um, 
uh, Troletta wants the sexy lad's phone number. Not sure which sexy lad you're referring to. And to check her, I see I thought Han was talking about time because the original Battlestar Galactica was weird time language. I watched BSU for the first time when I was young. I love the original Battlestar Galactica, but keep in mind, Star Wars came out a little bit before that. In fact, many people accuse Battlestar Galactica of being a Star Wars ripoff. Um, uh, Mary says, are you trying to kill me, Admiral Bro Code? Yeah. <laughs> Cruel and unusual punishments. Raise shields. Turn on the field directors. Stop the tourists. Yes. Uh, he is unafraid. He would do anything to me. Is he single? <laughs> wow. I don't know who are you, who you're talking about. Tr uh, who is the sexy lad you're talking about? Give me his phone number. I, um, Andy Chucker, when will you begin making 3d models of your avatar? For I'm actually, uh, I, I, that's one of the reasons I've been, I've, I've been trying to spend a little bit of time every day practicing in blender because i do want to make a nice 3d version of my avatar that i'm going to start uh probably uh, what i'll probably end up doing is create a little ebay store so that people can just buy them there um and yeah um it was a very fun goodbye um it says the person with the japanese name you need to tell me what your name is <laughs> so i don't just call you the person with the japanese name uh, do you like City on the Edge of Forever? Yes, it's not my absolute favorite, but I do really. That's it's a very well done episode. It's well deserving the Hugo Award that it got. Um, and what are you doing, Mary, to go blind? Well, she's talking about watching Lord dancing naked. Um, so let's see. Wasmere sigh. If only I could do live streams on Fet Life. No idea what you're talking about there, Watson Air. And Trigger, do you have a short version of the shot is not clean and take the the, the shot? Um, I don't have a short version. Uh, well, you want a short version? <laughs> uh, Mega chat number four and Uber chat number three and cheers. All right. So uh, by cheers, he means that since he donated to the printer fund, I got to take a drink. Which is why I keep a bottle of Romeo Nail for just such an occasion. So, thank you, my friend. And by the way, if you haven't seen Mega Chat... Rebecca, if you're still with us. If you haven't seen Mega Chat number four and Uber Chat number three, don't worry, they're not painful like uh, the other ones. Uh, but they're actually really, really good. So, let's bring them up here. Uh, let's see... Oops, that's not the right, right one. That's number three. Uh huh. What is this? A female of the skunk persuasion. She is so stunning, I must. Hey, hey, what are you doing? Stop objectifying that cat. Uh, what is this? She is the cat. Oh, I'm so sorry. I did not know I w Oh, what? What? Because she's a cat, she's not good enough for you? No, 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 no. But we are not even the same species, so... Oh, so now you're cat shaming. No, no. I am just... Get him! Get him! <laughs> oh, so objectifying women and cat shaming is not bad enough? Now you have to make fun of the disabled? Jeez. I do love that one. My son did a, such a great job with the animation on that. And so then we have Uber Chat number three. It's just so horrible. And people accuse me of being immature and childish because I do poop jokes. But hey, have you not seen my icon? I, yeah. 
So I got to admit, if, if you know, if this channel continues to grow, I'm going to have to get a tattoo of my, <laughs> of my avatar. My wife would hate it, though. Um, so let's see. So Tro Trolita says, the sexy dude in the James Bond bump. If you're talking about Lore Reloaded, uh, that's his channel name. You can check it out, Lore Reloaded. And I will tell you, he is single. So, you know, you can... You, you can make of that as you will. <laughs> the, those cartoons are hateful. How are they hateful? Um, how much super chat money would it take for you to disown your son and cruelly kick him out of the house on Christmas Eve? Just one lateral so name your price. <laughs> oh, Waspy, my old friend. Uh, first of all, you know I would not do that. And so as much as I would love to name a price, I could not do that to my son. And so, uh, sorry, not going to happen. Um, Captain Foley needs you to do the voice for the turd Joker to fight the bat. Oh, Captain Foley needs to do the voice for the turd Joker to fight bat turd. That's not a bad idea. I might have to talk to him about that. Uh, I'm reporting you to the WPLC. I don't. What is the WPLC? Um, let's see. Uh, Mecha Random never never apologized for stating a fact. Last Jedi should apologize to you. Absolutely. <laughs> SPLC. I still don't know what you mean. What is the SPLC? Your son does great work. Thank you, Brad. I agree. Ooh, single, eh? Yes, in fact, Lore Reloaded is, in fact, signal, ladies. And uh, he did propose to Mecha Random, but she didn't say yes because she is a robot in the service of Doomcock. Um, so, as far as I know, the wedding is not uh, not going to happen. Uh, Mercer throws a Next Generation video in the chat that I'll have to check out later. Because, yeah, we're live right now. But thank you, Mercer. Uh, when Andy Trekker is the best wingman. Um, okay. Oh, well, because I'm helping out more. <laughs> Everyone has a price. Not on that. You could not actually bribe me to, to kick my son out. I mean, hey, first of all, I love him to death. Second of all, he's autistic and 18. He wouldn't, you know, he wouldn't know what to do. And I couldn't do that to another human being. And so, no. Southern Poverty Law Center. Is that what? Oh, okay. Well, how how would you? Re what would reporting me to them do? So would Bat Turd be Guano Man? I thought <laughs> that's not bad. Turtis says Mary because I, she just saw cat shaming. She needs some Turtis action going on. Let's bring up the Turtis. <laughs> What? Is this right? So the Southern Poverty Law Center hates everybody on YouTube. I've never heard of them, but I'm sounds like I'm glad that I haven't. Can you see me? Oh, now be honest, Captain. Warrior to warrior. You do prefer it this way, don't you, as it was meant to be? No peace in our time. Once more onto the breach, dear friends. I wish I could do uh, do his voice justice, but yes, I do love General Chang. Uh, Mecca didn't say yes because she's a highly intelligent person. <laughs> Corona says they're a hate group because they love to hate. I yeah, I don't know anything about them, but and then reality says here you go, Anti Trekker, with yet another link. Uh, is this uh, what's this one? Oh, uh, Pepe Le Pew thing. All right, I'll. I'll Check that one out later. You always send me these random links. Uh, Andy Trekker, did you hear about the report that Lennox is going to be adopting the SJW code of conduct? Code developers threatening to pull code from the system could cause mass problems. I did not hear that. Um, that's too bad for, for Lennox users, for sure. I'm glad I'm a Windows guy. Uh, although, honestly, the, uh, I like the concept of Linux. Uh, the reason that I'm a Windows guy is, A, I'm just too lazy. That's really the main reason is because I know Linux, you have, to, you have to understand the ins and outs of the operating system a lot more than you do to just get away with Windows or even, you know, Mac. So uh, I don't have time for that level of detail on it because I'm old and just don't have a lot of time. But no, I hadn't heard about that. 
Um, and let's see. Uh, Ty says, Andy Trigger, what are your thoughts on Doctor Strange? Would you do a subjective objective review on it? I may, uh, eventually I'd like to do all the Marvel films. Uh, that's something I'll be honest with you that I've, that's been on my mind as far as if and when I get to a point where I can do the channel full time, then I'm going to do a lot. What I'm going to do is probably do more videos, like regular daily videos of whatever the topic of the day is, but then also have multiple objective subjective reviews going simultaneously because I would have the time and the lack of pressure that I have right now to get, I have two hours for I have to get to work and you know, that kind of thing. Um, oh wait, in order to do this right, Nerdotic says, cry havoc and let slip the dogs of war. There you go. Um, so let's see. Uh, the more time I spend editing, the more I can see the benefit of play, uh, paying someone to do it. <laughs> I, tell you, I, I get that. I actually enjoy the editing side, but for me, what takes the most time is the writing of my reviews because I do write them out completely as far as the review stuff. And I, it's, at that I mean, typically for a half an hour video, it would take me about six hours of writing. And that's just, I, I can't do that every day because of the fact that I have a regular job. <laughs> you know? How's long until the 3D dollar is finished? It looks like it's getting close. Um, I, I, I can't tell exactly how much is left, but I mean, let, let's bring it up to the big screen here. I mean, it looks like the eye stock is mostly done. So, and the, and the, I see the ears now on it, or whatever you want to call those. So, yeah, it's looking it's looking like it's going to finish uh, pretty darn quick. I'll try, even though it's going to be painful. I'll, I'll try to continue on the live stream until it's done. Um, but no promises because I'm, I'm starting to feel tired here. Uh, How Yes You One Studies, not bad. We just watched um, the one with the weird people that are linked to the plants on the planet and like make weird noises and got sick. If you remember that one? Um, uh, uh, at the time I spent editing, the time is not spending my... Uh, and the time I spent editing is the time I'm not spending on my first draft writing. Well, and that's, editing for me takes, on average for a video, about two hours. Um, and so, that's why, you know, yeah, it, it takes, it, the, the, if I'm doing a good objective, subjective video review, each piece of that review, and, and uh, if I'm not rushing it, each piece of the review is a good eight to ten hours of work. And that's tough to do on a regular basis. Uh, it genuinely is. Uh, Anti-Checker, would you do anti-trekking stream by driving in Forza Horizon f 4? Um, I've never driven in Forza Horizon 4 before. Uh, what is that? I assume is that, uh, is that a game? Uh, because I know there's a Forza game that I've heard of, but I've never played. Or are you talking about an actual vehicle? Uh, the Enterprise hosted Chancellor Gorkon and company to dinner last night. Our manners weren't exactly Emily Post. Oh, note to the galley. Romulan ale no longer to be served at diplomatic fun functions. You know the worst thing about that log entry is that the Kirk just admitted and put into the official record of the ship that they were serving an illegal substance uh, during a diplomatic function. <laughs> That's not good. Um... And Ty says, I enjoy editing videos. If anyone wants to look for an editor, I'm willing to edit. There you go. Ty is up for hire, guys. Uh, King ain't wrong. Uh, our news media and many... Uh, I said, I missed what King lost me. I said, our news media and many internet companies are deeply violating the way civilization is supposed to function. Well, you can't argue with that. Um, Andy Trekker, can you please do a live stream review? Let's play a Forza Horizon 4. Well, I've never, I don't even know what the, is, is that a, I assume that's a driving game, so I'll have to check it out. Um, but yeah, I may. Um, Chrono says that was an annoying episode. Um, okay. In the middle of... Uh, oh, you're talking about the episode of SG-1 I was talking about, yeah. In the middle of Season 10 in SG-1 and Season 3 of, S, uh, of SG-Atlantis. 
Oh, that's where you're at. Okay, Ricky. I was like, what? Huh? And Tricker, are you also a cat nerd? I am a nerd and I do have a cat, but I wouldn't call myself a cat nerd because I'm not like into cats. We have a cat because Joshua wanted a cat. Uh, we have a dog because Mrs. Antitracker wanted a dog. Um, I don't have a pet of my own except for the fish. Uh, I want to get a bird, but they're so expensive. Um, oh, and I forgot I haven't asked for a wrench, so I stopped lurking to do that. Wrench me. Oh, sure, Mr. Miles. Hold on. Let me get that wrench for you. And oh, no, what's that? Whoops, sorry. I was cleaning the wrench and it suddenly went off. Um, anti Trucker says, Captain George, if there is any game you should live stream, uh, it should be you versus me in Sins of a Solar Empire Rebellion. Problem is, you would kick my butt and then I would never hear the end of it because I, I love that game. I haven't played it in so long that I would be sitting there trying to remember how to build something when you invaded my space and I was dead. Um... And uh, Kronos says, anti trigger boss, sir, Mr. Miles asked for a wrench. Yeah, you ain't getting one. I love the scene in Solo when Han tries to bluff, but Lando flies away. That was actually a great moment from that movie. I wish that the whole movie was that kind of timing as far as the humor in it. That particular moment was was brilliant. I love that. Unfortunately, that was where the, the last good moment in the movie was for me anyway. Um... I need a wrench to turn my seas red with the blood of my enemies. Well, that's not, not going to happen. Car nerd. No, I'm not a car nerd. Um, I, uh, uh, no, I've never been, I've never been into cars. For me, a car is just something to get you from point A to point B, and I try to make it as nice as I can, you know, like have a nice stereo on it. Like my, currently, my current vehicle is actually an F-250. Uh, Reality Strikes has actually seen it. And I picked it up used. Uh, it's not anything spectacular, but, uh, you know, that's just, uh, I, 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 uh, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I'm, as far as nerdy stuff, I'm a nerd for science fiction, fantasy, uh, technology. But the main thing for me, I mean, Star Trek has been a passion of mine since uh, I was literally one year old. And so, yeah. Uh, we could always work together instead. Well, that's true. Uh, oh, you mean like in a sense of Solar Empire, like uh, working on the same side against bots? We could do that. I don't... Or, or you and me against Lore Reloaded. He's, he actually likes that game. Um, uh, what do the bribs want? I don't know what a brib is, uh, Trolletta. Uh, Antrick, and your cat is named Anti-Lore Reloaded. <laughs> no, actually, our cat is named... Marshmallow. Uh, Forza Horizon 4 is an open world racing game for the Xbox uh, One. It's a great if you like racing and driving around in open world. Uh, if it's only on Xbox One, then I can't really do a review of it because I don't have an Xbox. I, I have a PS4. Uh, is it not available on PC? Uh, the Ori are so incredibly sucked and the Ben Browder Claudia Black incursion was more an insult to... I have no idea what you're talking about, Wasp. Is that some SG-1 stuff? So, so don't don't spoil it for me. Reality says big truck. Yeah, it is a big truck, but uh, honestly, the only reason I have a 250 is I used to have an F-150. I need to have a pickup because we have a house now and I need to like, uh, we don't have garbage service where we are, so I have to actually drive my garbage to the dump. But the, uh, so that's the main reason I have a pickup truck. And an F-150 was fine until I got uh, T-boned and uh, it was totaled instantly. It was like this horrific accident. And I got really paranoid, and I was like, "Well, I'm in a I'm in a full size pickup. What could be tougher?" And then I so I got an F two fifty, and I feel like I'm driving around in a tank. I have a deep impact on TV for background noise. Some punk kid with a ring fetish is getting married to some girl. Oh, okay, yeah, I remember that part. <laughs> I was like, took me a minute. Wait, I miss sci-fi uh, sci fu used as social satire. Starship Troopers and RoboCop, the original. Oh, well, that's what you meant? Yeah. Um, th there was, well, there's still some of that. I mean, like, if you look at, I mean, not so much social satire, but, like, if you look, there's some interesting social commentary in uh, modern films like Moon or Ex Machina. Um, the wife and I just watched uh, Upgrade. If you haven't seen Upgrade, surprisingly good film for Bloomhouse. 
and I highly recommend it. Um, yes, heck yes, me and Anti Drinker versus Lori Reloaded sounds amazing. <laughs> oh man, Lore, Lore would actually probably kill us both. Um, can Mitchell dish out and take more punishment in two seasons than O'Neill did in eight seasons? I think can't. I, I don't know what you're talking about, future. Stop it. I'm still in season two of SG1. Don't be talking about stuff that's coming up. I don't know who Mitchell is. Shut up. Uh, and the computer for the Horizon 4 can be played. Okay, if there is a computer version, I'll, I will consider it, Captain. Deep Impact was good, but very similar to the first half of Larry Niven's novel, Lucifer's Hammer, even down to how the comet was discovered and by whom. I didn't know that. Uh, and no, Deep Impact was not a porn porno. Although, I, I'll be honest, I liked Armageddon better than Deep Impact. Um, yes, Armageddon was a little more silly, but it was also, in my opinion, a better film. Um, and this summer, Jared Leto gets to the bottom of things in Deep Impact. Oh, jeez. Oh, that sucks. I live in a condo and boob ab about talking. What? And boob about talking the garbage out. To, oh, t um, about taking the garbage out to the dumpsters. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, but you know what? I, I love it here. So I can handle the, the weekly trips to the dump. I actually also take Lord Reloaded's garbage to the dump too, because he doesn't have a truck and he lives, you know, on the way. Um, is it on Microsoft store as well as, uh, is also a demo, is there, a, there's also a demo. I might check out the demo, see if it'd be worth it. Um, because yeah, I want, I, I want to check it out first. Cause I, I haven't really enjoyed a racing game in a long time, to be honest with you. I used to like, uh, Paradise City, uh, Burnout Paradise City, but, uh, I don't know. Tom Holland is Marty, Marty McFly. I could see that. American West on Amazon Prime is a good series. Haven't seen that one. Um, although I can't wait for Expanse Season 4, man. I am uh, just dying for that. Tom says, I can't believe you have to uh, take your own trash to the dump. Well, that's what I get. For the, the, see, here's the thing. Where I live, this house is outside of the city limits of Murfreesboro, which means that I don't have to pay city taxes, which is a good thing. However, being outside of the city limits also means that uh, you, you, there's no garbage service provided by the city. However, uh, one thing that's nice about Tennessee compared to where, uh, in California, you don't have to pay to go to the dump. You, it's free. So that's all right. Um, and Trolita throws four ninety nine into the chat, telling me that Trolita is using an Apple device and says, burb is burr is bird. They scream and give us big pink things, a lot of crap. Because what are we supposed to do? Thump them? <laughs> okay. I like... Here's the thing. There is a bird at the local pet store here um, that I love this bird. And unfortunately, it is for sale, but it's like $1,600. So I'm probably never going to get this bird. But if I like somehow came across some extra cash, I would buy this bird. Um, it's a beautiful, I can't remember the name of the breed, but it's a parrot looking bird, a deep red and blue colored bird, beautiful bird. And it's a, it's a talker a little bit, you know, says hello and stuff like that, but also does an absolutely flawless imitation of the phones at that pet store. And so let me see if I can find it real quick because it's hilarious to hear. And by the way, Trolita, don't forget you can pick a super chat or Uber chat reward if you so choose while I am looking for this uh, footage I took of that bird, which is so freaking hilarious. But I have like way too much crap on my phone. I really need to delete a lot of this, but I never get around to it. Picture of fish tank. Picture. Uh, there it is. Let's see if I can. Ring, 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 ring. Ring, 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 ring. That's the bird. That's the bird making that sound. Uh, and so I love it. Um, the Gear Campy is now the CEO of Stream TV. Well, I guess that means Stream TV is going to suck from now on. Uh, yeah, that totally figures you like Armageddon more than Deep Impact. Whatever, Waspinator. Um, 
Let's see. Can't wait for the Expanse Season 4 as well, even though it was the weakest book in the series, in my opinion. Uh, with a newfound budget, I think they will do the book Total Justice Plus. We get to meet Elv. I don't know well, I don't know who that is, but there you go. Can the bird 3D print? Probably not. <laughs> who would drive a commercial class 678 truck in a game with 240, uh, 2,400 horsepower? Well, why not? Teach that bird to do cons. Oh, that would be so awesome. All right. I've done far worse than kill you. <laughs> uh, do not buy, LOL, perpetual two-year-old with autism. I know, but I, lo I love talking birds. I always have. And I was actually, here's what I was actually thinking. If I ever could, um, I would get a bird like that bird. And which, like I said, it's a beautiful bird. Besides the, the uh, let me see if I can. Can you do the phone call, Sam? Let's see if I can. Okay. I'll ch I don't know if you guys will be able to see it. You can kind of see its color. Unfortunately, the phone's too bright. Um, but it's absolutely gorgeous bird. And let me see. Where's the phone brightness? Turn that down. See if that makes it a little easier to see. That's all too dark. Um... Try about there. There you go. Now you can see it. There's the bird. And so... Let's see. Ring, 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 ring. Ring, 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 ring. I just love that sound. And as Mrs. Antitrucker saying, I love that. She thinks that bird is awesome, too. Um... Anyway, what I would love to do is get that bird and, like, set up that bird over here somewhere or something and teach it to say phrases in Klingon and, like, quotes from Khan and stuff like that. That would be so awesome to be doing the live stream and then you would just randomly hear behind me, ah, kapla, you know, that would be just so cool. So, yes, um... Do you like the game Angry Birds? I actually did like the original Angry Birds. I don't play it anymore, but yeah. Uh, uh, what would you do if all your files got erased? Panic attack? Um, I would be really, really upset. <laughs> so if all my files got erased, I mean, I could still function as a channel, but I would be really disappointed because there's a lot of stuff I've built up, like all the stuff that you see in front of you right now, the opening credits to my shows, all that stuff. Ah, uh, I would suck having to rebuild all that. Um, and so I should rename my channel to Captain Captain Admiral. No, you, you, Waspinator, you need to change your channel to Commodore Matt Decker because that's who you are. Um, Bubba Bird is the word. Oh, <laughs> it's from Family Guy. I never got into Family Guy. Chrono said he stopped watching it at that point. I never got into Family Guy because to me, uh, it's just like like the first couple of seasons of South Park I didn't really care for, but now I love the show because I like when they got into the social commentator and the fact that they uh, actually are, uh, they make fun of uh, just about everything. Left, right, center, doesn't matter. Um, Captain George is taking off. Well, I'm out, everyone. May the force be with you all. You take care of yourself, Captain, even though you're an idiot. Uh, I love you anyway. Um... And speaking of captains, Captain Foley is back and says, how long have you had your channel? Interesting. You should ask that, my friend. Uh, now, of course, I have to look at my calendar because, okay, so Monday, as in, well, now that it's actually technically after midnight tomorrow, but Monday is my one year anniversary for this channel. Uh, so I started on October 1st of last year. Now, I've had several YouTube... I've been on YouTube for about the last, oh gosh, eight, eight nine years, maybe even longer. But the um, I've, I was on YouTube when YouTube was, was a pretty new thing. However, um, there is uh, the... the, the uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, the, the, this particular channel, I started, I started it on October 1st, last year. Um, Amy says, check Facebook message. Well, if you're talking about the Anti-Trucker Facebook, well, uh, I don't actually have, because I have a technical problem, I don't actually have direct access to it. Uh, 
And so I will, uh, Captain George has to relay that stuff to me. So I'll uh, tell you what, Amy, if it's something you want to get to me tonight, try, if you can, send it to me through Discord if you can. Um, other because Captain George has just taken off for the night, so he won't get it. Um, Anti, ask Captain Foley about your rendering issue. Well, Captain Foley doesn't do the rendering as much as for, well, I, I know I just have to learn Blender. That's the problem. I'm, I'm a total noob when it comes to Blender. And uh, back in the day, I used to use Lightwave and I used to use Maya. And I prefer Maya, but Maya is very expensive. Lightwave is a really solid modeling program, but not as good at the rendering side as Maya. Uh, the Blender rendering engine seems like crap to me. Cycles, if you put enough effort into it, can look nice, but takes like ridiculous amounts of time to render. And the Blender render, uh, which is their simpler rendering engine, is quick but looks like crap and half the items that you that, like that, like i have this that star destroyer model won't even render in blender render for some reason so whatever uh let's celebrate with a 24 live stream on monday yeah that's not gonna happen i have to work <laughs> but thank you for the thought uh monday is also your 34th birthday well very cool i didn't know i started my live stream on your 33rd birthday then um but yeah, I, I, on Monday, I'm, uh, I'm probably just going to put up a video just kind of reflecting on the one year. But I don't have anything major planned because yeah, I, I just don't. Trekyards started coming in here. YouTube has started throwing Trekyards videos at me again. <laughs> and Trekyards is apologizing. <laughs> you know nothing about Discord? Discord is actually pretty cool. The link is below. Uh, you can access Discord through a web browser, but there's also an app both for the computer and for your phone. And it's basically just private chat servers. So you, uh, anybody can set one up. Uh, so the anti-server is the name of my server. Captain George helps administer it for me. And when you join, and when you join the anti-server, it is completely free. There, you don't have to pay for the app or anything. Um, then you can not only participate in the group discussions, like the general chat and stuff, but you can also send direct messages to me and anybody else who is uh, uh, on there. So, uh, let's see here. You need to be more blender fluid. <laughs> oh, man. Um, it's just easier to figure uh, everyone is a troll and life is a lot easier. That's true. Captain Foley, do you like the new game uh, Forza Horizon? And Captain Foley says, yes. No jokes, just yes. Anti, just make your Star Wars versus Star Trek video with rendered screenshots. That's what I'm probably going to have to do, but I really want to do the animation. Oh, and speaking of... Hold on just a minute, guys, because... Uh, I'm going to let you guys enjoy a little bit of pain for just a minute, but there's a reason for it, so hold on. I may have a sh**. It's not clean. Repeat, I do not have a clean sh**. Take the bloody sh**. Okay, I'm not going to make you guys suffer. Um, but I just needed to put something up there. Uh, so as you may notice that the printer has in fact stopped. So I pulled this little guy off of the printer. Now, obviously you can see that there's a lot of interesting artifacts. Now this is a cool thing about the Ender 3 Pro. And, and one thing that I really do like about it, I just wish that larger printers had this available. This is what's called a print mat. All 3D printers have one. Uh, a lot of the, most of the modern uh, printers actually have it where it's removable like this. So you can obviously take the mat off. And you can see that the printed object sticks to the mat. Well, one of the big challenges of 3D printing is now getting this item off of the mat. Unless you happen to have this one because it's flexible. So you can literally just peel the mat right off. And that is actually very nice. Um, 
Now, this little guy, um, we'll see. So now we can see, like, here's the, de the death ray, obviously. And this is support material that's created to make sure so that when it prints this section, it doesn't just, like, spew out melted plastic that falls to the ground. And so now the next, this, this is going to take a little bit of time. I need to go through and remove all this support material. And that's one thing that I think is a little bit of a problem right now is that it's tending to put out a little too much support material. So it's going to take me a while to get all of this pulled off because it shouldn't stick as hard as it is. And that's something that I have to work on as far as figuring out uh, the best way to get these prints done. Um, so the next step that I have to do with this particular model is the cleanup process. That's probably going to take at least a couple of hours. However, I'm not going to bore you with peeling off bits of plastic right now. Uh, as far as recycling the plastic, you can't, there are actually uh, devices you can get out there to grind it up and turn it into new filament uh, or to use it for melting down and, and using it other stuff. Um, I haven't done that yet. It depends on if I if I end up printing lots and lots of stuff where I may have eventually whole um, um, uh, multiple printers going simultaneously all the time, then I may have to do something like that. Um, so let's see, let's see, uh, Hellraiser time. Why Hellraiser? Ah, oh, the suffering. Uh, is there, uh, let's see. Admiral Broco, oh, I'm on a 3D printer right now. Yeah, but you see, I still have stuff to look, because like I said, this came out really nice as far as the overall detail of the print, I think is pretty nice. However, there is way too much support material on this thing, because the support material should be so much easier to remove than this is going to be. This is going to take me a long time to like remove this without breaking the toilet plunger and stuff. Uh, it will be interesting to see how the printer uh, it, uh, does affect the power bill, Mr. Miles. That's something I'm curious about as well. Um, we can watch you fix up the for the next few hours. I have nothing to do. <laughs> no, nah, because I'm too tired right now. Plus, I've been drinking rum, you'll nail. I don't want to break it. Uh, will the great Mrs. Antitrucker be doing a stream soon? She said she might tomorrow. Might being the operative term, so I don't know. All right, guys. So on that happy note, now that they, you got to see uh, my first complete Dalek that still needs a lot of cleanup work come off of the printer itself. So there it is in all of its Dalek-y glory. Um, and I'm going to wrap it up there. And I want to, and I want to say thank you all for uh, for joining me, hanging out with me all this time. You guys are great. Uh, special thanks to Captain Foley because, you know, well, he's, he's royalty around here. So always nice to have one of the big boys here. So uh, stop following the Daleks balls. I will try, Mr. Miles. It's going to be difficult. How long? That print took just about 24 hours. And so, um, but, and, but that's also a small printer. I mean, there are printers that can do it faster, but those printers are all, are really ridiculously expensive. Anyway, guys, thanks again. You guys take care and have a wonderful whatever it is. Oh, what happened? Looks like it froze up on me again. Let's try. Let me go back. Weird. Everything's freezing. the anti-tracker we will return to your scheduled programming shortly or we are currently experiencing technical difficulties
like Kronos the wasps have struck Kronos once again poor guy he uh, wasps not wasp moths I was thinking about King Waspinator uh, and so thank you Kronos I truly do appreciate it uh, because uh, he is the moths at just so you guys know uh, Kronos is infected uh, his house is, is overrun with these moths that break into his wallet and give me the money they are very well trained moths and, I, and I'm very very happy about that um, but, uh, yes. So, and he was suggesting that I do like a, a, a computer fund and the, uh, what, what I'm actually seriously considering doing is, um, I was going to try to get a 3d printer that was a lot more expensive, but there's one now that I'm learning how this one works, there's one that's like this one, but a little bit larger that I'll probably end up getting that'll cost a lot less than the resin based printer. And... Uh, that way I can then start rolling into uh, a computer fund. Parrot fund would be a long time away. So I, I would love to get a parrot fund, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm not that greedy. All right, guys. Uh, so uh, in the meantime, we get to vote. So you guys get to pick, thanks to Kronos, anything other than a regular chat. So Uber chat one through five or mega chat one through four. Throw your favorite out there right now in the chat top two are going to get played and if you don't then i'm just going to play mega chat number one because you guys will suffer so now 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 you got so i'm trying to give motivation here I'm trying to do something because you guys mr miles votes for zero of course because he's a jerk um and trolita votes votes for lamp um thomas Votes for, okay, we've got an Uber chat number one, a mega chat number four, Uber five, but old number four, <laughs> Uber five. So we got two votes for Uber five, Uber two. We need a tiebreaker here. Foley con. <laughs> That's cheating, Captain. You can't vote for yourself now. Um, besides, didn't you hear? I played Foley con when you first came out. All right, so we know that Uber number five is definitely the runaway winner. And so we'll throw that up there, and then we got to figure out another one here. So, um, does anybody really know why we're fighting anyway? Well, um, I think, hey, didn't he vote for Trump? Hmm? Get him! Get him! Get him! Get him! So remember... If anyone has an opinion, they're probably wrong. Now we know! And knowing is half the battle. Oh, I've done far worse than kill you, anti trekker I've hurt you. And I wish to go on hurting you. Uh -huh. I shall leave you as you left me, <laughs> as you left the commander. Marooned for all eternity in the center of a dead YouTube channel. Buried in comments. Buried in comments. <laughs> and yes, the con con will indeed happen. So uh, obviously Captain Foley's con is, uh, is very popular. And yes, it's going to get an animation, Captain. Um... Uh, so what I'm doing right now is getting together. There's several cons that I actually have stored now, uh, including an Irish con, an English con, your con. Uh, we, we still need more. So uh, do you have a specific PayPal for the printer? Is it your normal? Yes, the one in the link below. I'm not sure. Let me check. Yeah, it says anti-printer fund uh, in, the, in uh, the description for this video. And so... Uh, so you can, uh, you can put something there and, uh, every dime of that goes towards the printer, which I'm right on the verge of being able to get, um, the one. And then anything, if I do actually raise anything above and beyond the cost of the printer, that will just roll over into the anti-computer fund, uh, because that is going to be the next thing that I'm going to have to do to make things work around here. Um, why Sylvia should do a con. I actually, I, I was talking to Mrs. Antitrecker about, she needs to do one. 
after you after the foley cut you screw truck yards <laughs> i would say scream foley but it doesn't sound as good you're right yeah or a parrot now a parrot uh parrot is way down the road chronos uh i may do a parrot fund many many <laughs> boots from now but i don't know if even i have the as much as wasp here likes to call me a walking talking tip jar uh i i don't think i'm that bad but you know there is the tip jar and so which by the way uh acid designs made this if you haven't seen his work he is freaking awesome trek yards you should look up acid designs uh he does great great work um so you should 3d print a one-dimensional object like your perspective on the last jedi <laughs> you're you're funny waspinator you're really really funny jerk <laughs> It's the anti tracker We will return to your scheduled programming shortly, or we are currently experiencing technical difficulties. Kronos, who loves to not let me get any sleep, but I truly appreciate it because it helps me get that much closer to the printer. So even though it's painful, it's it's a it's a good kind of pain, I guess. Um, so that's your that's your flight history, uh, Amy. Man, you have may you have traveled. I tell you, that is some. Uh, for those of you that don't know, and it's on the Discord. She posted a record of all her flights. Um, and holy crap, she's been pretty much everywhere except for South America and Africa. Racist. Um, and uh, let's see. And as far as within the U.S., looks like pretty much um, all up and down the eastern seaboard. Um, all up and down the west coast. Just like the, the north Northern part of the Midwest is like the only part of the country you've never flown into, but I don't know if there are any major airports there. <laughs> uh, but that's very cool. So, Kronos, what's the plan here? And so, the Trekker Trekkie thing was pretty dumb, but isn't being anti Trekker the same as being pro Trekkie? I'm not talking about that, Wasp Bear, until I hit 10,000 subs. That's the deal. Um,. And uh, Thomas is asking Trek how many ships have haven't they made videos of? Uh, 742 in the entire universe. Same as before, Sir Anti Trekker. All right, Chronos. So that means that once again we get a vote. So uh, Thomas is already getting on there. He wants Uber Chat number one. So okay, guys, what's it going to be? You guys going to just say okay? Thomas has got this one. Or are we going to just not vote because you guys love to? not vote i know there's 27 of you guys watching and one of you voted that's like you know american numbers i guess for the <laughs> for the elections um so iron wolf throws in mega chat number four 
Um, it would just be faster to give your bank account to Anti <laughs> Foley, kill you with a knife. <laughs> Evil Foley Con, says Josh. Oh, man. All right, so, so far we have one for Uber Chat number one, one for Mega Chat number four, one for Foley, kill you with a knife. That's a really creepy one if you haven't heard the Foley, kill you with a knife. Mr. Miles wants a hypno turd. Okay, so now Josh said evil Foley con, which is not the same as Foley kill you with a knife. See, so keep in mind, the, the Foley kill you with a knife is genuinely disturbing. So, um, so let's see. We need, we need a, a tiebreaker here because we got one vote for a bunch of different stuff. Um, so, Kronos, I'm going to have to default to you since uh, since I can't seem to break. Oh, so now Trek Yards wants the Hypno Turd, so that breaks the tie. He switched his vote from Foley with a knife to Hypno Turd. And so uh, let's get. Uh, and then we got another vote for Foley Kill You with a Knife. So we'll do Hypno Turd and Foley Killing You with a Knife. So, Hypno Turd starts out with some beautiful, soft music and everything. All hail the hypno turd. You must give to the hypno turd. All hail the hypno turd. Now, I know I could keep, I, I don't know why I paused there. So, uh, however, actually, I think we are going to pause it. And we can all stare into the eyes of the hypno turd, and I, I want you to just think about the hypno turd for a moment, and how wonderful and beautiful the hypno turd is, as we think about our lovely friend, Captain Foley. No, it doesn't have the registry on it. Oops, that's the wrong clip. Uh, so that's Captain Foley just being Captain Foley. <laughs> Oh, the anti trekker He tasks me. He tasks Oops, me. Oops, that's not the right him. one either. I'll chase him round the moon. Boy, Captain Foley says a lot of psychotic stuff. Okay, here it is. I know this is the right one. When I end someone, do you want to know why I use a knife, anti trekker Guns and phasers are, are too quick. You can't savor all the little emotions. Because you see, in their last moments, people show you who they really are. Who are you, anti tracker I will find out. All hail the hypno turn. You must give to the hypno turd. So there we go. A combination hypno turd and Captain Foley being completely psychotic. That was just like one of the most bizarre and sick and evil super chats of all time. Uh, Captain Foley is the next James Bondville. I think he needs to do the voice of the Joker. I mean, come on, that was awesome. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> Yes, that was, that was pretty serious. And the funny thing is he is he's Canadian and Canadians are inherently ridiculously nice people. And so this is like all of Canada Canada all of Canada's rage fueled into one person. And that is what uh what is Captain Foley. And now Trolita is getting mad because of all the poop humor even though Trolita knows that that's what this channel does but that's okay because i love you anyway and of course now my computer wants to be stuck once again because mm -hmm. why not?
Hmm, it's the anti-checker. We will return to your scheduled programming shortly, or we are currently experiencing technical difficulties. to go on hurting you. I shall leave you as you left me, as you left the commander, marooned for all eternity in the center of a dead YouTube channel, buried in comments, buried in comments. <laughs> You know, talk about waiting to the last possible second, Kronos. I was literally about to click on the end stream button when you did that. You... I reckon I can't fault you for supporting the channel. Even though sometimes I feel like I ain't got no reading to kill nobody. Ah. <laughs> uh. You <laughs> so, Kronos, third time's the charm. What you gonna do this time, my friend? And so, you, you, you literally, yeah, I, you barely made it that time. You really did because I was, I literally had the mouse right on the button that was gonna end the live stream. A bastard, jerk, etc. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Waspinner says, yes, ban the anti-checker. Why didn't I think of it before? Then he'll have to start a new channel and, and he'll have to beg me for sweet, delicious subs. Wow. Waspinator, you're just mean. You, you're a mean drunk, aren't you, Waspinator? I mean, you're not a nice drunk like Trek Yards or, uh, or Dr. Alex. You're, you're the mean kind of drunk. Drunk. Uh, I have been reported for unacceptable poop humor. <laughs> Uh, sorry, if, if you know, but here's the thing: if if you can't stand the poop, then, well, I guess you'd be really constipated eventually. Um, Colonel says I'm semi-drinkish. <laughs> Waspinner says I'm so. Well, that's the problem then, Waspinner. Maybe you're like Bender, where you have to have the proper amount of alcohol in you for in order for you to be quote unquote normal. But Kronos, what are we doing? No more Stalin here. Oh, you want the 80s and something for the other friends. Okay, so we're going to put on Meanwhile in the 80s, 
and you guys get to vote on another one. So while Meanwhile in the 80s is going, please throw in your vote for what you want. Uh, if you don't, then you're a jerk and, and or you're just watching it. So, uh, does anybody really know why uh, we're fighting anyway? Well, um, I think, hey, didn't he vote for Trump? Hmm? Get him! Get him! Get him! So remember, if anyone has an opinion, they're probably wrong. Now we know! And knowing is half the battle. And, well, since Thomas is the only person who voted for, and he wants Uber Chat number one, Captain George is going to be so sad that he's not here to see Uber Chat number one. You're wrong, your highness. I am lore reloaded. A lore master. Like my father before me. So be it, lore master. If you will not be turned, you will be destroyed. You will pay the price for not going with the studio's vision. Father, please! Huh? No, no, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, Trolita, uh, I, I have to say this because you, you bring up a very interesting point here. Because Trolita says, poop is not funny. What's wrong with you people? Oh my god, this is literal rape. Now, that... Was, uh, was that your head floating in a tip jar? It absolutely is. Thanks to Acid Designs, he created that for me. Um, but, uh, Trolita, you actually really exemplified a common problem with people these days is they do not understand what literal means. Uh, no. It, you, what you should have said is this is figurative rape. However, to say it is literal rape means that you don't know what either what rape means or what literal means. Booyah. See, that's, that's my mic drop, because I don't have a mic. Well, I do have a mic, but I'm not going to drop it, because it costs money. And by the way, I know nobody threw in a super chat or anything, but I just want to say, since Trekyard says, get schooled by anti Trekker, literally nice. And here's the thing. If you want to have a good saying, all you have to do is say, at the end of the day, and then you can say literally anything that pops into your head, and you got it. You, you can absolutely nail it. And I will give you a couple of examples right now. At the end of the day, you got to put your batteries in the remote control. See, that's a deep statement, right? Even though, you have to, at the end of the day, righty tighty, lefty loosey. You know, it doesn't matter. You can say anything. At the end of the day, webcam ain't going to work unless it's plugged into the USB. Boom. At the end of the day, the credits are what are at the end of the show. It's the anti-checker. We will return to your scheduled programming shortly. 
or we are currently experiencing technical difficulties. Again, Kronos. You did. did, did. You make me refresh my. You you sure did. Ah, you bastard. Yeah. All right, Kronos. So what are we doing this time, my friend? So uh, let's see. Captain Foley is con for reals. I'm I'm beginning to think that. I mean, you know, he has that that friendly look to him, but you know, he also has that look that when you look at that face. You could see that buried underneath that friendly, warm exterior, that just that that dad looking just slightly, slightly overweight, kind of looking like a friendly dude is the mind of a psycho who has killed hundreds, if not thousands of people, all buried across Canada. So, you know. That's, I'm just saying, I'm not saying that's true. I'm saying you can't prove it's not true. <laughs> oh, man. I'm sorry, Trek Yards. You know I don't mean it, but... <clears throat> uh, <laughs> now watch, now I can't be on his show because I, I said that. I shouldn't say that. Because in all honesty, uh, Captain Foley is a genuinely nice guy, and he's been nothing but kind to me, but... Uh, Hard to bury people in the permafrost. I could, but you know, global warming that'll make it easier for you. Um, okay, so Chrono says I am the Borg and you are something something. I want to make peeps suffer with Mega Chat number one and a vote. All right, guys. So here's the deal: Mega Chat number one coming your way. If you want to protect yourself from the bleach, all you have to do is try not to look at it and vote on what you want for the other one. Otherwise, I'll play it again. I may have a. Sh not clean. Repeat, I do not have a clean I guess I haven't seen any votes except for one person, Josh, who voted to see Mega Chat number one a second time. So are you telling me that nobody is going to vote for anything other than Mega Chat number one when, in fact, you guys were all complaining about Mega Chat number one? So I'm going to give you a few seconds, but you know, since we did have a vote to replay Mega Chat number one, that's going to happen if you don't vote for number. 
Okay, so Thomas says, oh, I said number two. Okay, I didn't see that. So Uber Chat number two gets a vote. Um, and so we got a, now we got a tie between Mega Chat number one and Uber Chat number one or two. Mr. Miles wants the Hypno Turd. Track Yards wants number seven because why not? So, but I believe according to the rules of Kronos, actually, uh, track yards, you have to vote for either one of the Uber chats or mega chats. So number seven, you can't vote for, um, Beavis and Hypno. <laughs> Although I don't think, I, have you seen the Beavis and Butthead one yet? Um, Captain Foley. I don't remember if you've seen that one. Kronos likes number the France one. So, and Kronos gets uh, dealer's choice since he's the one that picked and we were all tied up anyway. So we're going to do that. We're going to, we're going to go to France one more time. <laughs> What is this? A female of the skunk persuasion. She is so stunning, I must... Hey, hey, what are you doing? Stop objectifying that cat. Uh, what is this? She is le cat? Oh, I'm so sorry. I did not know I... Oh, what, what? Because she's a cat, she's not good enough for you? No, 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 no. But we are not even the same species, so... Oh, so now you're cat shaming. No, no, I am just... Get him! Get him! <laughs> Oh, so objectifying women and cat shaming is not bad enough? Now you have to make fun of the disabled? Jeez. The most accurate portrayal of France in the history of YouTube. It, that is undeniably an absolute fact. But... Just because I'm in a giving mood, and a couple people mentioned this one, and we haven't watched it in a while. Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I do like that one. All right, guys. Have a wonderful whatever it is. Yeah. Three. <laughs> and of course, Jay is like, oh, I want three seconds of, let's see, so three seconds, so. Mm -hmm. the anti-checker we will return to your scheduled programming shortly or we are currently experiencing technical difficulties
Your front yard not growing according to your plan. Are you unable to eradicate those pesky rebellious crackers? <laughs> Call us. I am the lawn master. And everything will grow according to my design. <laughs> Do it. 